Hello, everybody. Welcome to Two Pop Tuesday. I, I said Tuesday. I, it's, it feels weird. Every time I say it, it feels weird. I felt like I had to. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome. How's it going? Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome on in. Uh, I hope this is the main menu music because uh, I was playing around with the options and I made a mess of things and so I reloaded the game and there was no music again. So I had to go back to the jukebox, so I just picked the first one on the jukebox. But it, it feels like a, a good theme to have either way. So uh, I, I hope this is the right music for the menu, but either way I could just change it to something else I think if I wanted. But hello! <laughs> But welcome in everybody. I hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone's had a good start to the week. Twofold Tuesday. I'm so excited. I'm so ready for this. I've been looking forward to this for a while. And Addy, the 40 months. Ah, thank you so much, Addy. Hello, welcome, welcome. All right, let me let me welcome everybody before I already start going off on tangents. <laughs> but welcome in. Congratulations on the first bob. Welcome, Rika. I. Rika, you did it again. You managed to post a message the exact second I clicked to start stream. I feel like you psychically know. <laughs> you have to know at this point. It's so wild. <laughs> but welcome, 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 Ariel. Lovely to see you. Welcome, Mari. It's Twofold Tuesday. I know you've been excited for this too. I'm also excited for this. And Capsai. Ah, oh, Twofold is your baby. You'll gladly wake up before the sun's up to watch it. Yes, I am so sorry for US time zones because my stream time is a little early. But I hope I can be a really nice morning morning uh, accompaniment <laughs> for you. I'm here to help you wake up with smiles and Twofold. I'm really excited for this. Ah, uh, Ariel also heard that... Yes! Yeah, Verpro's gonna be at Ofkai again this year. We're gonna be at Ofkai Expo. It's been announced. Uh, basically what it is, is it's actually Studio Elan at Ofkai. Uh, Studio Elan is like sponsoring some of the things and has a panel for announcements and stuff. And we, the Verpro streamers, are kind of just crashing that. <laughs> we're just like, hi, we're, we're attached to the Elan umbrella. We're, we, we can get in on this. VTuber convention, we're VTubers. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it though. I'm I'm excited for it. Uh, we we were there last year, but there were a few technical difficulties with our panel, so it was a little bit all over the place. But we're going this time with like the intention of it being a lot more relaxed. Like we're not going in with like set plans and like this is the thing we are doing. We are doing this. It's going to be more of like a, a very casual hangout kind of thing. And also people will be drawing. There will be art. It will be live art happening from amazing artists. Uh, not me. I'm, I'm not going to be arting. <laughs> but it's it's going to be fun. It's going to be really nice. It's mostly just, I'm I'm excited to see everybody. I'm 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 going to be here like, hi. Can you stand right in front of the webcam so I can stare into your eyes? <laughs> I'm really excited for that. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. Very excited. Also, Suzume, hello! Welcome, welcome! Woo! Addy, thank you so much for the 40 months. I'm so glad the the subs are still working for you, even though you're you're living in South Korea at the moment. I'm glad the payment things are still going through. <laughs> oh, and thank you for doing the the Addy command as well, Bob. Thank you, thank you. But yeah, I'm 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 so excited for it. <laughs> Oh, you just realized something, Bob? You forgot the glasses on my model. Well, that's okay, because I can I can simply say I took them off. <laughs> the glasses are removable. The glasses are not massive priority, but if you did want to do them, I, I do have glasses sometimes. Honestly, it, I don't really wear my glasses in real life as much as I probably should. <laughs> so it's fine if there's no glasses. Yes, ah, oh, Korean rides. Also, Maya, hello! You made it! You did! Welcome, welcome! Welcome on in! I am really, really excited for this because when this came out, I, I bought it as soon as it came out. I bought this game the day it came out because I had been so excited for it for a while. Like, I was following things up to the release. And it's actually a little bit of a funny story. I was, I was offered a, a free key 
for this game to play on stream. And my response was, uh, you can't give me a free key if I already buy it. And then I very quickly bought it. <laughs> Usually I'm just like, oh yeah, free games, that's great. This one, I was just like, no, I want to give my money here. I'm, I'm giving money here. <laughs> and honestly, I've already, I've already gotten my money's worth just with like first no with the prequel and I've heard so many people who've played this say that it's really really good and I think I'm gonna enjoy it a lot so I'm I'm, I'm so excited. I'm I'm so I'm so glad I did play first snow going into it too to have an idea of some of the characters. Like obviously I don't know anything about Olive who is the protagonist of this game. Well I know that they're I know that they're voiced by Dotovu and that they're very, very, uh, like, monotone? Like, that kind of... Okay, let's see what I'm doing now, I guess. But that's all I know. I don't know anything else. <laughs> I mostly... When I'm playing story-based games, I try to avoid as much, like, story information as I can before I go in. Because I, I like experiencing it myself for the first time. I like I like finding things out as I'm playing the story, so I'm I'm very good at avoiding every little bit. <gasps> J June! Hello! Oh my god, another 40 months! It's all the founder subs coming out, oh my goodness. <laughs> J June, hi! I hope you're doing well! Thank you so much. Ah, oh, don't sell myself short. I know everything. Well, I, I... I don't know everything, I just know what I know. <laughs> But thank you so much for the 40 months. That is that is such a big number. That is wild. But thank you and welcome. Hello. I am... I... Last night, I fell asleep really, really late. But I managed to sleep all morning. And I got the most sleep I've had in maybe a week now. <laughs> so I'm feeling really good today. I'm, I'm feeling positive. I'm feeling like I'm actually slightly functioning, which is always really nice. Big number, almost four years. Well, you could say it's 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 almost it's almost fifty months, all right? <laughs> yeah, I think the funniest thing about knowing things is like when I was younger, I didn't know anything. When I was a teenager, I thought I knew everything. Now that I'm a grown adult, I realize I know less than I thought I did. And I'm fine with that. Like, I'm fine not knowing everything because there are some things I don't need to know. So long as I know what I need to, that's that's the important part for me. <laughs> I'm already getting deep into this. Also, Cora Syllabus! Sorry, I'm I, I missed your message. You got you got caught just before the sub alert. But hi, welcome, welcome. Yeah, truly the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Yeah, it's intelligence and wisdom. I have a fair amount of intelligence. My wisdom can be too, a, a little lacking sometimes. <laughs> but it's okay, I'm, I know more than I did. Honestly, I've, I've got life experience on my side now. I, I realize how much I learned just from going through life and being like, oh, I made a mistake here. I must never do that again. <laughs> Oh, you know you enjoyed Lily? I'm I'm so glad, thank you. <laughs> I'm really glad. But yeah, I'm really excited to play this because I, I completed First Snow and I didn't fully complete First Snow. Hold on, hold on, sorry, I'm gonna be really annoying. Before we start twofold, I'm gonna really, really quickly can I open two Steam games at the same time? I don't know if it will let me do this. Hold on. I think it is. I think it's letting me load two Steam games at the same time. Okay, it is. Hold on a second. I'm gonna mute the game audio just for a second. Because I have something very important that I have to do very quickly before, before we start twofold. I didn't fully complete First Snow. I still have an achievement I need to unlock on that. So I thought I would unlock that really quickly right now on stream. What, what background music? 
the zippers. There we go. Right, where is the... <laughs> I've lost my, my window capture. Where? Hold on. Okay, very quickly. Hold on. Professional streamer who knows exactly what I'm doing. I've literally just got this windowed at the moment. <laughs> But here we go, here's, here's first snow. I finished playing this last week, and now a very important moment of truth. We're gonna get the final achievement. It truly is twofold now. <laughs> We've got game in again. I just tried to drag the, the game window on my, on my monitor, <laughs> thinking it would move it in OBS too, and it doesn't. <laughs> We're off to a good start. I should probably open my monster soon. But it's okay, because quickly, quickly, before we do anything else, I installed the 18 plus patch. And now we're just gonna turn that off. <laughs> there it is! Unlock the secret option and then disable it. First snow is now fully completed. As it should be. <laughs> Anyway, th this game doesn't have an 18 plus patch. There isn't any like 18 plus content in it from what I know. Let's put the music back. There we go. But yeah, I, I, I forgot to I forgot to actually install the 18 plus patch in the last stream. So I did that as soon as the stream ended and then proceeded to forget that I'd done it until I was literally talking just now about how I completed First Snow. And I was like, well, I, I, I'm, I'm an achievement completionist. I had to fully, <laughs> fully complete it. <laughs> but it's okay, it's, it's twofold time now. I'm really, really excited for this. Ah. So it's a say-so visual novel? Well, I, I feel like say-so is such an interesting term, really. Because it's like, what, what counts as say-so? I don't, I don't actually know. <laughs> I consider myself like a comfy streamer, and I don't know, I, I, I get the, the say-so label attached to me quite a lot, but I'm, I don't know, I play a lot of violent games and that doesn't feel super say-so. <laughs> but yeah, I, I wanted to get the silly achievement, so I've fully completed it. Also, Bob, thank you for the hydrate! It is time. Cracking open my Monster Energy Ultra Rosa. Because we're not playing First Snow anymore, so I, I don't feel limited to the, the white cans anymore. I'm going on pink. It's pink time. Pink cans. And these monster were bought for me by Barb as well, so... It seems fitting that you're the one redeeming the hydrate too. <laughs> it's like, hey, I bought you those drinks. Drink them. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the head pat too. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm I'm gonna start the game. I, I don't want to end up getting distracted and talk for an hour like I usually do, because I've been I've been waiting to play this game for so long. I, I want to play it. So I oh I'm excited. <laughs> I have no obligation to do it. Though. Don't worry. I know that. But I I love monster. <laughs> It's just like, just so you know, you're not forced to drink the highly caffeinated beverages. And I'm just saying like, oh, I know that as I drink a whole can. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. The other day, uh, the other day I had a really bad headache just out of nowhere for no reason. And I couldn't find any paracetamol. So I went and asked Sander if he had any because uh, he's, he's had like a lot of paracetamol in his room, like after his... Uh, wisdom teeth shenanigans and so I went to his room and he was like I'm so sorry the only one I can find is a uh, paracetamol with caffeine and I was like well that's fine because caffeine doesn't really affect me anyway so I, I had that I had the paracetamol with caffeine and then not five minutes later he walked into my room after I'd taken the tablets and Olive he was Leary. like <gasps> Olive Leary that's me now Hi, Mila, thank you for the 38 months. Oh my goodness. Welcome, welcome. But uh, yeah, he 
he walked into my room not five minutes after I'd taken these and he just very sheepishly said, I'm sorry, I just found some paracetamol without the caffeine in. <laughs> right after I'd taken it. This was at like 11 p.m., by the way. <laughs> but thankfully, caffeine really just doesn't affect my sleep at all. Like, I can, I can have no caffeine for a couple of days and still not sleep. I can also down a can of Monster and nap for four hours. <laughs> it doesn't affect me in like an awakeness way, it affects me in an alertness way. But uh, welcome, welcome in! Welcome. Uh, actually, I'm not quite sure what say so means, but yeah, it's, it's basically like... It's used as a term for like, pure and... Wholesome innocence, like that kind of vibe. And like, I mostly go for that, but I, I don't like to like stick a label on myself because I do play games like Borderlands <laughs> and, and Baldur's Gate 3 and there, there's, it's like mature content, not in like a sex way, but in like a violence way. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I don't, I don't do like the, the sexual content. I'm fine with the gory violent content. <laughs> But yeah, they do them with caffeine. It's like, there's also another one that's like paracetamol plus caffeine plus something else as well, some other active ingredient that's listed as specifically like cold and flu relief. <laughs> so there's so many. I just wanted plain paracetamol to stop my head hurting. But on the plus side, it did stop my head hurting, so that was good. And who is the Red Queen? Oh my goodness, yes, that, that game was so incredible. And also a lot. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so excited for this. Oh, Nekolio, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome on in to Twofold Tuesday! Right, we're gonna start. We're gonna start now. I'm so ready. New game! College will open new paths for you, is what my mom had always said. I took those words to heart, despite my usual cynicism. Even as my high school friends drifted away from me over the years, and the stresses of moving out and living alone mountain, I continued to believe in them. Then came today. The meeting with the advisor was never going to go well. Academic probation isn't oh. a term thrown around in good circumstances. No, not really. Even with all that, Ooh. a 1.2 GPA was a surprise. Five whole credits. 1.2? I don't know much about the American education system, but that's really bad, right? <laughs> if, like, a 4.0 is, like, a perfect, really good kind of thing, that's, that's like a quarter of that. That is... Wow. <laughs> After cruising through school before college, it feels like a bad joke when I repeat his coldly delivered words in my head. My heart sinking. I finally close the door behind me. Uh, average D grade. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's... That's not great. <laughs> oh, but actually, yesterday you couldn't sleep because of the ADHD medication. Oh, yeah, you've got to be careful with ADHD medication because it is a stimulant. So it's not the kind of thing to to have, like, before bed. I get, it, a lot depends on the medication. But, yeah, that, that might take getting used to. Basically straight Ds. 66%. That is, that is like, impressively bad. That is very worrying. <laughs> A chapter of my life closes with it. And a new one begins. Close one door, another door opens, right? It's um you can can you get back from a 1.2? <laughs> oh goodness. Walking by the bike propped up against a wall, I shiver from the chill of fall running through my apartment. The practically non-existent insulation does little to keep the cold out, 
nor the noise. Without a roommate to share the space with, there's little to hear but the occasional passing traffic. I hardly mind. Solitude is more comfortable anyway. Unfortunately for me, that same silence makes me focus all the more on my failure. Upon reaching the living room, I simply... stop. It's not like this should be out of left field. I'd stop checking my grades on the school website, knowing full well that the hours eaten up by work would take their toll. Oh wait, that makes it feel even worse. If it's because they were working, that they didn't have time to study as much. Oh, oh. Oh. Took it at 9am. Oh, that might be a sign that the dosage is too high then. <laughs> Between working late and studying early, it's all I could do to not fall asleep during lectures. Denial, that's all it was. Now it's caught up to me and I have no real way out. Dima, hello! Happy Two Vault Tuesday! Welcome, welcome! Welcome on in. I'm I'm so excited to play this. I I love that it just immediately starts and it's just like, hi, here's Olive. They're failing. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Recovery time. What do I do now? For all I've tried to avoid burdening my mom, neither of us could possibly afford another semester or so of college if I failed out. I shuffle to the kitchen counter and grab a glass of water to calm my nerves. With little else available to distract myself from what I should be doing, I step over to the fern on the sill and slowly drizzle the pebbles around it with water. I'm surprised it's still alive after all this time, having bought it when I moved here. Managed to take care of a plant feels like a bad consolation prize given everything else I've messed up. All I can do is sigh and appreciate the chance to wind down a little by caring for the thing. I feel like, like, narrating this, my, my voice is going more monotone, like, naturally. <laughs> I didn't realize it. I've got, like, like, such a different voice for narration reading this out than I did with First Snow and Allison. That's interesting. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's such a, it's such a perfect start immediately. I'm like, oh, oh, poor Olive. Oh, I, I want the best for them already. Ah, with the soil darkened and leaves shining from the droplets of water, I put down the glass and fall back onto the couch. Might as well get this over with. <laughs> Wait, Oliver, who's Oliver? How did Oliver get here? Get out. <laughs> I fish the phone from my pocket and navigate to my mom in the contacts list. Then I press the call button. Anxious seconds go by as it rings before she finally picks up. Hello? Hi, Mom. Oh, I love how the text boxes have, like, different backgrounds. Wait. That's such a good... That's such a good touch. Hi, Olive. How's it going? I just got back from talking to my advisor. What did he say? Her cheery tone drops a little. She must have heard the defeat in my own voice. Yeah, and then this is like the, the logo background. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that is, that is such a beautiful touch. I immediately noticed that. I'm like, that is so, so perfect for, for like emphasizing the characters. I love that. It's... I have a 1.2 GPA. Only five credits. Ouch. I feel like I'm deflating as I sink further into my couch. I thought I'd be scared or frustrated at how bad this is, but that's worn off and become a dull emptiness. Oh, the... The apathy of despair. <laughs> what a well-timed sad violin. Hi, Kuni, welcome. Yeah, oh, it's... I'm... I'm already... I'm already enamored, and I'm, I'm like... Ten lines in. <laughs> oh, honey. Oh. Also, uh, please let me know if any of the audio levels are a bit loud or quiet, too. I did my best to 
try and do as much as I could on the menu without actually going into the game. But it's it's always different when actually playing the game. So like if if I'm too quiet compared to the game or anything, please let me know. But I think it should be okay. I think it's all right. Yeah, it seems fine. I'm I'm glad. Hello, Leary Squared. There's not that many. There's only two. <laughs> I'm not squared. I guess I could be. I do like cubes. It's very true. <laughs> but welcome, welcome. Oh, I'm I'm glad it sounds good. Okay. Mostly, like if if anything, like a, a character comes in and the voice seems too loud, just let me know and I can adjust it. Because the settings in this game are very. What's the word I'm thinking of? There's a lot of them. They've thought of a lot of options. <laughs> there's there's a lot to to be able to choose from and change. <laughs> oh, am I more squared or more circled? I I don't know. I guess I would be more squared. But that's okay because it's hip to be square. Oh. <laughs> The last tone of voice I wanted to hear was that sweet, concerned voice. It'd be so much easier if she just yelled at me, a sentiment I've thought more than once. Also, can I just say as well, sorry, I'm getting really distracted. I really love the cursor as well. <laughs> I love this cursor so much. Uh, I'm, it's I just... Okay. It's okay. This doesn't mean the end. I know someone as smart as my Ollie can find a way. I believe in them. <laughs> if I pulled off a decent GPA and passed all my classes and managed full credits for them, I'd still end up short. He did try to give me some options, but... See? There you go! Options! That's good! I, I don't know if they'll do any good, Mom. It's an intro art class and a creative writing class. He even said they're basically filler. Art and writing, you say? <laughs> there it is. There it is. I see where this is going. It sounds like it's something you should try, don't you think? You could easily tackle either of those. You have to try. You can't just give up. I've never been good at that kind of stuff. You know that. You can only give your best shot. I think that's more than enough. You've been through harder trials in your life, and you've overcome those, and you're so much stronger for it. What this means is that there's hope. What a lovely mom. What a lovely mom. I'm so glad that Olive's mom is so nice. This is lovely. This reminds me of the relationship I have with my own mom. I'm, I love my mom so much. She's great. <laughs> She's great. My mom's like a friend to me as well as a mother figure like she she does a lot for me very much reminds me of my own mom is this gonna turn into me becoming the protagonist of every game i play now <laughs> me playing the last game like oh I, I identify with allison so much and then i'll be playing this like oh i identify with olive so much i also nearly uh failed out of school <laughs> yeah um anyway hope. I really wish I could believe her on that one. This is one hell of a long shot. I did fine in topics like science and math back in high school, but I've never had an inkling of creativity. The art scene is also the last place I'd want to be anywhere near. Passing one of the two courses should give me barely enough credits to pass. Barely understates things. Then again, a pass is a pass, and skipping a semester isn't an option financially. Mom would doubtlessly do her best to help cover the costs, a fact that puts a knot in my stomach. Luna, hello! Welcome, welcome! Thank you for the head pat. Welcome on in. Welcome to Twofold Tuesday. I'm... I'm... I, I already love it. I've barely started. All this is just trying to rationalize away one simple fact. She's right. I'll do my best. Sorry for putting you through this. Honey, you don't need to apologize. Oh. I know there's a lot going on. I know you're doing what you can. 
Sorry, I'm having an emotional sip <laughs> of my drink. You always have me on your side. Your advisor wants you to succeed too. That's why he gave you this option. I know you can do this. I'll see you at work in a couple of days. We can talk about this more there, okay? I know it's easier said than done, but try not to stress yourself out too much about all this. Oh, they work together then. Oh, I wonder if it's a family business. If it's a family business, it would explain why they're so busy with work. Maybe I will find out. But I, I think it says a lot about a game and the story and characters when it's so easy to relate to the characters. I feel like that's the sign of a really well-created character. <laughs> also, like, the opposite way around, though. Like, if you find a character and you're just like, I cannot relate to this character in any way at all. They are so different to me. That's also, like, a, a well-written character. <laughs> but it's... I... Uh... Maybe you can make yourself something to take your mind off things. It's nearly dinner time after all, so make something nice for yourself. It's gonna be like instant ramen, isn't it? <laughs> it's a better solution than drowning my worries in some greasy fast food. As much as I'd love to take the easy way out of any additional responsibilities tonight. Yeah, we literally just started too. I'm... I love... I love when a game grips me immediately like sometimes i'll play a game and i'll really love it but it takes me a while to like properly get into it this one i'm i, w I was in I, w I was hooked from like the first few lines i'm i'm already invested <laughs> all right i'll try see you <sighs> bye olive i love you just remember that tomorrow's another day yeah a fresh start Things are going badly. Tomorrow's a new day. Love you too. With that, the line goes dead. The big moment is over. I rest the phone on the coffee table before me. Starting tomorrow, I have all of one week to decide on one of the two classes. A class that'll decide whether I get a college education or stay stuck in this rut for probably the rest of my life. All I have to do is pass an art or English class to do it. As the silence of the apartment starts gnawing at the back of my mind, I decide to get up and start preparing that dinner to distract myself. Distraction is a good, good strategy. Ha <gasps> ha! Prologue time! Via thread. There they are. There they are. I know the names of all these characters now. I'm so proud. <laughs> the next day. Oh, I love the little, the little transition there. Today marks the beginning of the experiment. The drop period for classes ends next week. And so at my advisor's suggestion, I've signed up for both the art and English lessons. The plan is to sit in on both, decide which is best for me, and drop the other. I only need one to survive, and I'd rather not stuff my already full schedule any more than I have to. I love the music. I love the music. Let's listen to that. The bassy twang of those notes. Listen. So here I am, sitting in art class, having a big stretch and a sip of my drink. <laughs> Thank you for the posture check and hydrate. I'm, I'm already postured correctly. I'm not shrimping, but I will have a sip. Thank you. Thank you. I've got to remember to stay hydrated. Especially when I do a lot of reading. I feel like I don't realize how much more I need to drink while I'm reading until my throat starts hurting. And then I'm like, I, I need to drink more. Oh, oh, I actually made my tea today as well. I fully forgot about it. I, I made myself a flask of tea and then I put it on the side. A, a little bit like out of my range of vision. 
And because I couldn't see it, I immediately forgot <laughs> that I'd made it. I've got my tea. I'm going to have some tea as well. From my squeaky tea flask. Ah. Yeah. This flask is so squeaky. Although it's really funny because for some reason, my, my flask only squeaks when there's a drink in it. If there isn't a drink in it, it just doesn't squeak. <laughs> so I don't know what what is doing it, but I guess just the f having something inside makes makes it squeaky. I don't know. I don't know. But oh, I'm postured correctly. Then the posture check means I have to posture incorrectly now. No, the posture check is so that I can check up on myself and have a big stretch. I don't want to posture incorrectly because then I'll be uncomfortable. <laughs> But yeah, I, I suffer a lot from the, the out of sight item man thing. I'm very good at forgetting things if they're not like right in front of me. It's why I have so many alarms set on my phone. <laughs> I forget about things unless I'm actively reminded. And it's like a posture toggle. <laughs> Can you imagine if I did a posture toggle and it's just like, if, if I'm shrimping, I sit up straight. If I'm sitting up straight, I bend over, lean into the screen. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> but yeah, I need to remember how I have my tea. It's so soothing on my throat. It's so nice. Oh, Hikari as well. Hello, good morning. Welcome. Welcome on in. I've just been having a sip of my tea, enjoying a good visual novel. And here we are sitting in art class. I've gone back and forth on this all day, oscillating between, I don't have an ounce of creativity. There's no way I can do this. And it's just drawing, right? Could it be so hard? And from there, we will cover the Futurist Movement, which after its founding in 1909... I think I've settled on there's no way for now. Try as I might to take proper notes, I have no idea what I'm writing down. Uh, just, just from that one line, I feel like this is the kind of class I would definitely drift off in. <laughs> There she is. There she is. Here we go. Here we go. Yes. A movement in the corner of my eye and a small chirpy voice beside me aren't helping. Hey. Hey. Hi. Hi. The thing in my peripheral vision is shoved further into view. Glancing over shows it to be an open notebook, which I try to tune out. Um, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> that's not going to happen with Caprice. <laughs> you cannot ignore that notebook. It's going to be shoved in your face. <laughs> the notebook slides back and forth in response, tapping on my own book as I try to write. Grimacing only spurs them on, now sure that they have my attention. What do they want from me? For you to look at the book, clearly. Clearly. Starting your VTuber endeavor this evening. Oh, I hope it goes well. Good luck with that. Hat at Caprice. <laughs> I like seeing Caprice. Uh, the hat really suits her. I can understand what you mean now. Like, if, if you've played a lot of Twofold and you're used to seeing her with the hat, it's probably weird seeing her without the hat in First Snow. <laughs> I lightly slap my hand down on the paper, stopping their movements. Far from being discouraged, the culprit beams back at me as I glance over. <gasps> She's so pretty. <laughs> she really is so pretty. Oh my goodness. I love this, this art. Cast against the window beyond her, the girl smiles cheerfully. The two of us couldn't look more different as I stare wearily at her, the sun behind her paling in comparison to her own bright nature. She gives me a thumbs up of encouragement, earning a bemused, furrowed brow. <laughs> you see, the CG where they tried to make you fall in love with her. It worked. It worked. <laughs> Cap Caprice. 
Uh, the way it, when when you write it like with a space between there, I'm just like cap rise. Where is the rise? <laughs> I might as well humor her at this point. Okay, yeah, Oliver's trapped now. <laughs> and space dinosaurs, hello, welcome, welcome. Oh, look at the otters! Look at the otters! Hey, you look pretty lost. Are you doing okay? You need some help? I raise my tired eyes back to the author, only for her to resume her thumbs up pose. Is she genuinely interested in helping or just making fun of me? <laughs> just trying to focus. <laughs> that's, that's such a good like shutdown answer that Caprice is not gonna take. Would it be too rude to add that she's only making it harder? I decide against it and slide it back. Go oh, here we go. Here we go. This yeah, I know it's hard. This guy teaches it so 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 boring, but listen. Hey, listen. I know all about this stuff. I can help you if you want. Well, yes. Yes. <laughs> Caprice only has one trick and it always works. See, the trick is stubbornness and persistence. <laughs> works every time. If if you never give up, then you will never lose, right? Uh, that's, that's probably terrible advice. <laughs> uh, oh, Caps once made it. Oh, <laughs> the typo Cap Rice. I <laughs> Oh, I, I love the thought of Caprice with a space in between. Oh, and Bob, thank you for the... Oh, okay, we're going uwu now. Is it because I did the hey listen? <laughs> thank you for the uwuctionary, uh, uwuctionary narration redeem. Let me get my own book out. Hold on, where did I put it? Oh, no. I may have put my dictionary somewhere. Hold on. Okay, I found it. My chair is so squeaky. I need to I need to try and like oil it up or something. I don't know what I have to do, like WD forty or something for the joints. <laughs> but thank you for the Ewuctionary narration redeem. Also, Grace No! Meow meow meow, welcome in! You're just in time for Uwu voice. <laughs> welcome on in. Thank you for the, the dictionary redeem. We got the letter T. Let's see what we got. Hi. We got thallium. Thallium, a noun. A soft, silvery, white, metallic chemical element whose compounds are very poisonous. The origin is the Greek thalos, meaning green shoot. Thank you. Oh, and thank, thank you for the regular dictionary narration, too. Now I, now I can read this one properly. I'm so glad we got a, a poisonous chemical element. <laughs> Let's see if we can get something better for R. Let's see, what do we got? R is for... <laughs> no, this is a cop-out. This is terrible. I got re, as in, like, as a prefix. It's listed in here, it's just re, prefix, meaning one, once more, anew, for example, reactivate, or two, with return to a previous state, for example, restore. That's boring. I'm, I'm doing a, an actual word. Hold on. Let's go a little later in, in the arts. Let's go boom. <laughs> okay, thank you for the dictionary narration. We have right angle this time. That kind of fits with art. I feel like you need to, if, if you know your angles and stuff, that, that can help with like perspective stuff. So right angle, noun, an angle of 90 degrees as in a corner of a square. There's also, it includes the phrase at right angles too, which means forming an angle of 90 degrees with something. The adjective is right angled. <laughs> but thank you for the dictionary narrations. I, Pop that down there for now so I know where it is. One day I will have narrated every word in the dictionary. One day. I wonder if I'll ever get a repeat. It's very possible I might get a repeat word sometime. 
because all I do is like I, I find the pages where the, the letter is. I open a random one and stick my finger on the page. And that's the one I read out. <laughs> so it's very possible that I'll get a duplicate at some point. But there's a lot of words in the dictionary. So it might take a while. Looking for used vehicles. Check the car price. <laughs> nice. Uh, right angle. Position your arm should be for throwing axes. Oh. I see. I've learned something about throwing axes today. I've never tried to throw an axe before. I don't know if I would trust myself to try it. <laughs> I don't think I'd trust myself with an axe in my hand. Anyway, back to this. Uh, is Olive gonna say yet? Yeah, this class is really boring and impossible to understand. I think they should do it. I look at my syllabus on my desk in front of me, full of names and terms and concepts I know nothing about. This class isn't just drawing at all. It covers everything from art history to social movements. My heart sinks at the sheer breadth of knowledge that'll be needed. The professor's droning lecture is soon lost on me as my attention wanders to her notebook. Yeah, I think I think a priest would be more interesting to listen to, <laughs> at the very least. Also, Timochi, hello, welcome, welcome. Why did you read Tim World for the game name? <laughs> yeah, slightly different to that, a little bit. But welcome, good morning. Welcome on in. Olive is failing and needs to do classes for things they don't know about. Welcome. Though she's dedicated the full page to this conversation, I can make out various notes about art bleeding through the back of the page, even if the handwriting is hard to decipher. My eyes drifting further, I notice another book sitting on her desk. An open sketchbook this time, its pages covered with drawings of this and that. And in addition to the doodles in the notes, Oh, that's in addition to the doodles in the notes she's been passing me. Yeah, all the little otters. They're so cute. Oh, Mama's watching a blue jay out of your window. Oh, I love that. Are you getting the ah, 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 sound that cats make when they see a bird? <laughs> I'll be fine. No, okay, sure. Change their mind. This class must be perfect for someone like her. Yes! <laughs> ah. I'm pretty sure in Caprice's mind, Olive probably just signed up for the art club. Ah. <laughs> uh, oh, she tries to do that, but she can't. She just squeak me out. Oh, I love that. Oh, your cat's laying on top of the record player. I love that. I don't know where Tiffany is at the moment. I think she's probably lying on somebody else's bed because uh, she doesn't want to be in my room when I'm streaming. Like, whenever I start streaming, Tiffany always leaves my room. Like, she could be fast asleep on my bed. As soon as I sit down at my desk and I go, hello, testing, she, she wakes up and sits by the door to be let out. She does not like being around for stream time. Anyway, upon reading my note, she suddenly shouts aloud in excitement. All I can do is freeze as the attention of the entire class, including the professor, is instantly drawn to her. Oh, God, attention. No. No, don't look here. Uh, yes. Caprice, <laughs> is there something you need? <laughs> His pronounced sigh makes it all too obvious that he knows this particular student altogether too well. Uh, just excited and ready to learn. Is there something you need? <laughs> I love her so much. She's so good. She she just she she makes my soul happy. It's like I feel sad, and then like you see Caprice coming along, and it's like impossible to stay sad. You just kind of have to smile. <laughs> oh, she's so good. She knows I'm going to be all giggly and talky. Yeah, I think that's probably it. She's like, I was having such a nice, quiet time, and now I know you're going to be talking for four hours. Get me out of here. <laughs> but hi, Breshi. Welcome, welcome. Happy Tuesday. 
How's it going? It's going amazingly. This game is already... Sorry, I had to move my mic a bit. This game is already everything I was hoping for and more, and I've, I've hardly started. It's so good. It's so good. But welcome in. I hope you're doing well as well. I need you to stay quiet while I'm talking. That's okay with you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. Three packs full, sir. She gives an exaggerated salute, which seems to satisfy him. There are a few quiet giggles around the class. Not that she seems to care. I cannot think. <laughs> well, I don't think Caprice does think. She 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 speaks and then realizes what the consequences are. <laughs> but Akira, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome on in. Yeah, I've I've been so excited to play this game, and it's it's already living up to expectations, and I feel like it's just gonna get even more. <laughs> she turns and sees me watching, which prompts her to give yet another thumbs up. And after a moment scribbling, to give yet another note in the corner of her page. <laughs> she signs the note, though I've already caught her name from the professor saying it. Uh, let's talk after class. I know just how to help you. I'm Caprice, by the way. <laughs> I know <laughs> I love the little drawing. Look at her. That's so good. I figure I might as well reply one last time. Thanks. I'm Olive. I have no idea the kind of person I've just agreed to talk to. Is she normally the type to pass notes and shout out during class? Yes. The last time I remember communicating like this is elementary school. The rest of the class goes by uneventfully, for better or worse. I try my best to take notes and follow along, but by the end, the professor's ramblings and tangents end up overwhelming me. Olive! Before I can even leave the classroom, I'm accosted by my new acquaintance. I had planned on waiting for her outside the door. Olive, right? That's... right? <laughs> I'm Caprice! Nice to finally talk! She extends a hand, which I take. Her shake is surprisingly firm and fast, my arm being yanked around by the slight figure before me. Uh, yeah, so... So, listen, I'm the president of the art club here on campus. Yeah, I knew it, I knew it immediately. <laughs> Just like, I can help you with that, join my art club. I knew it. Like, the, the second she jumped up, I, I knew she, she'd already recruited Olive. <laughs> Whether Olive wants it or not. Oh. Well, not the art club, but one of the art clubs. The better one. Forget about that other one. <laughs> In fact, forget I mentioned it. There's only one art club, and it's mine. Oh no. <laughs> and you see, we're looking for members. Any level of skill will do. The best way to learn art is to work alongside your peers. Uh, hey. So if you're looking for help, there's really no better way than to join our art club. We're all pretty much good artists who can definitely teach you anything you need to know. I can even offer you personal lessons. That's a generous offer from the club president, you know. Personal lessons. I have to stop this. I'm not looking for a club or anything like this. Thank you, but I think I'll pass. Oh, oh no. She retreats a step back, hands clasped together. I came on too strong. I'm sorry. Um. Don't worry about all that stuff I said. I do think we could help you, though. Oh, yeah? I... I appreciate the offer. Really. But I just don't think... I'm not asking you to join. Just maybe come by sometime? And Olive's gonna be way too polite to... say no to that. Or, like, just 
social anxiety to say no to that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, I know. I'll set up a club meeting for you to scope out. I'll let the others know to expect you once we can decide on a date. No strings attached. No strings at all. Definitely not. Uh, don't worry about how strongly you're being pulled. There's no strings here. Don't worry. I think you'd fit right in. I can already tell she won't relent until I give in. I sigh. She's not going to let me go until I offer some kind of compromise. Okay, sure. I'll give it some thought. Awesome! Trust me, it'll be great! That's basically anyway, a yes already. Anyway, I gotta go. See you around, Olive! <laughs> uh... Oh, it's it's so so nostalgic already. I'm fond memories. She pats me on the shoulder and runs out, leaving me in her dust. If I don't go, she'll definitely confront me about it next class. I'm not looking for a club to join, though, and I'd rather not deal with someone so high energy. Maybe just sitting in won't hurt? I'll worry about this later. I've got places to get to as well. Oh, is it time for work? Maybe. Probably work. <laughs> oh, Capri sounds so familiar. Uh, yeah, you may recognize her from um, the game I was playing before this as Caprice. <laughs> no, but I, I, I feel like a lot of the, a lot of the voice actors in this game, I, I recognize them from other games and other things, and I'm always just like, oh my goodness, wait, I, I, I recognize that voice. They're all so good. It's also really funny thinking about the fact that um, the the voice of Olive is also the voice of uh, Miho from Please Be Happy, and we've got like the most opposite characters imaginable there. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. The afternoon shift at the diner has proven to be a slow one, much to my relief. With mom off for the day and the rest of the staff otherwise unavailable, I find myself idly flipping through my art textbook at, at an empty booth. The contents are overwhelming compared to what I expected from a class like this, and I have to constantly remind myself that courses like this typically rely on participation and effort more than anything. It's still hard to not stress out about it as my eyes glaze over foreign terms and information, though. Yeah. Ah, uh, now that you think about it. Yeah, Caprice and Lena from Please Be Happy, they would definitely get along. They've got that, like, go-getter energy. They they know what they want to do and they're going to do it. I love them. The small chime of the bell pulls me out of my trance as a customer sneaks through the door without me noticing. Hi. Hi, hello. Who could this be? Oh, originally Dot was suggested for Olive and Oh, you you only know her as Mio. Just, uh, do you know what kind of character Olive is? Yeah, Dot Over's voice range for character work is incredible. Aspirational. I've I'm inspired always. I've I really want to get into voice acting, but I need to figure out a lot of stuff before I can like fully like aim towards that. Mostly, one thing I want to do is I want to figure out, like, a little home studio setup thing to get, like, good audio quality. Because the way things are at the moment, it's like, I'm, it's fine for streaming. I've got a good mic. I've got a good mixer. I've got, like, the tools. But my room, and especially where my desk is, is very much not optimized for, uh, for, like, sound quality. <laughs> There's a lot of flat surfaces and stuff. So I'd really like to, like, sound treat my room a bit so I can make things sound better. I also just need to, like, fully dedicate myself to EQing my mic at some point, but that is terrifying and I've been putting it off for about a year. Ha! <laughs> huh. But yes, I digress, we have a Millie. I bounce to my feet to greet her, trying my best to hide how off guard I feel. Hey, welcome to the bell house. Party at one? 
The bell comes. Yay! <laughs> I go to retrieve a menu for the woman as she turns to meet me. A three, actually. My roommates should be in shortly. They're just wrapping up a conversation out in the car. <sighs> More Capris. And Haley. Yay! I'm so ready. Got it. Booth it is then. Right this way. I take a few steps further into the diner, ready to lead her to a spot near the back. I only make it a couple feet before a voice interrupts my train of thought. Hey Millie, catch! She turns back around towards the entrance of the diner, handily catching a small keyring sent flying towards her. Hey hey! It takes a moment to get my eyes on the picture. A woman in orange and yellow seems seeming to be the culprit. And behind her? Yeah, this looks like a cute little diner. Doesn't it seem so nice? It seems so lovely and quiet and peaceful and... Oh. Oh no. <laughs> There's no other way to rationalize this other than some sort of divine level prank, as the leader of the art club from yesterday is the last to enter the tiny space. Much to my despair, she seems to recognize me as quickly as I recognize her. Ah, it's you! <laughs> oh, look at them. I love that they're all, like, color-coded. <laughs> they all have, like, colors attached to them. I'm, I'm such a sucker for anything that's, like, color coordination or, like, same thing but different colors. Like, things with color schemes, I'm, I'm a sucker for a good... <laughs> a good character color. It's me. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, right. Haley, Millie, meet the newest art club member. Olive, I'm pretty sure their name was. They didn't, they didn't say the joining yet. <laughs> uh, also, like, I'm guessing by the, the way that Haley's dialogue thing has like musical notes and stuff I'm guessing she's very musical which makes so much sense and it's also so cool how it's like different aspects of creative creative subjects like all, all of the creativity in different ways for each of them wait I could assign each of them a matching monster energy oh my goodness well well Olive is like the the basic I don't, I don't want to just say basic, that sounds mean. Like the, the original. The, the monster energy with the black can and the, the green logo, that's an olive one. Caprice, yeah, Caprice matches the, the mango one, the ultra fiesta with the teal can. It's very fruity and bright and fun to drink. It would suit her well. Millie. Millie, I, th I think Millie would be the ultra rosa. I think it would fit her. It's, it's got like a very like sweet, sweet taste to it. You can just drink a lot of it without it being like overpowering. And then Haley. Hmm. I don't really know enough about Haley yet, to be honest. I, I need to, I need to, I need to learn more about her. But yeah, oh, time to go mow the lawn. I hope you have a good lawn mowing, Hikari. It's very fruity and bright and so is she. No, that's exactly it. <laughs> yeah, Olive is the control group. Yes. Yes, Olive is like the, the no fuss, no nonsense. You want a can of monster, you get a can of monster. Oh wait, no, Olive's monster energy flavor is water. Olive's monster energy is, uh, no thanks. <laughs> I'll give Haley the peach for now. The peachy keen. Just because I like peaches and she seems like a peach. Anyway, <laughs> they're not the newest art club member. Pleased to meet you, Olive. Her smile looks sincere, which makes the short pause beforehand even more concerning. She got you roped into this without even having your name down yet? Yeah. Uh... 
she got a ride on her first go, at least. I'm not in the club yet, though. Just testing the waters. It's only a matter of time! Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Anyway... Wanting nothing more than to be done with this interaction, I spin myself around and start making my way to the back of the diner, beckoning them to follow. It's hard not to notice Millie glance at the textbook I had left out as the trio pass it by. Uh, I, I know nothing about like an olive oil coffee, but I don't think I'd want to try that. Also, wannabe weep! Hello! Welcome, welcome! Thank you for the head pad, it is two full time! I'm already in love. I'm already in love, I'm already so happy to be playing this. Welcome, welcome! The three shuffle in, Caprice and Millie on opposite sides, Haley opting to follow in after Millie. Yeah, yeah, Caprice gets her own side to the, the booth. <laughs> after I pass them their menus and pretend to look busy by wiping down a nearby table, the three make idle chatter as they talk about our offerings. I'd like to say I wasn't eavesdropping, but the truth is simply that they don't end up saying anything interesting. It's not long before they settle on their orders. Loaded fries for Caprice, a chicken salad for Millie, oh, a chicken sandwich for Millie, and a breakfast platter for Haley. The latter is a bit annoying to prep at this hour, but it's nothing I'm not used to at this point. I carefully sit each plate in front of its intended recipient. The fries give me a bit of a scare with a near spill, but Caprice helps save the dish in the nick of time. Enjoy. Just speak up if you need anything else. It smells great. Thank you. With a small wave, I leave them to their meals, taking my seat back at my textbook a couple booths over. Their food choices really do say so much about them. <laughs> it's what I'd expect them to order. Oh goodness, I, I would be so lost with art history stuff. My eyes continue to glaze over the writing and images. The entire book is nothing but a jumbled mess to me. It's more logical approach to the arts contradicting the hands-on approach of the class. To relieve the strain from my eyes, I occasionally glance up at the diner's current guests. Millie's quick to steal a fry or two, with Caprice matching her roommate's thieving by taking a forkful of hash browns from Haley's plate. <laughs> the laughter and back and forth you'd expect from stuff like this is more subdued than you'd expect, but they seem to be enjoying themselves. And then Haley spots me. I try to avert my eyes back down to my book to feign ignorance, but it's too little too late. Hey. Whatever your name was. Olive. Hi. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> let's go with that. Just like, that's your name. Just like, sure, whatever. That, that, that whatever. <laughs> that can be your name, sure. I love it's just like deadpan, deadpan, deadpan. I, they're, they're great. With Millie glancing over Caprice's shoulder and Caprice's head spun around, it looks like I'm not getting out of this. With a resigned sigh, I stand up and approach their booth again. Don't suppose this is just you asking for a refill? Haley seems to consider it for a moment, glancing down her half-empty cup before deciding against it. Maybe in a bit. Just figured you wanted to chat with you staring longingly at us like that. Oh, Haley, I love her already. <laughs> Just call him out like that. That's so good. Caprice and Millie share a glance. Internally, I cringe. Thanks for wording it precisely like that, Haley. I have known you for approximately five minutes, and I already feel like hiding away forever. Sorry, that textbook was giving me a headache, and there's not much else to look at in here. <laughs> uh, also, Peachy, hello! Welcome, welcome. Thank you for the head pad. Good morning. Come on in, we've got embarrassment and social anxiety. Welcome. <laughs> Studying at work is impressive, though. You must really be invested in the art class already, huh? <laughs> yeah, invested. 
Yeah. Not at all, sorry to say. <laughs> I've actually got another class tomorrow as a backup plan, in case the art one doesn't work out. Oh, really? What kind of class, if you don't mind me asking? Huh? Uh, just intro to creative writing. Some small filler thing. What? Caprice slams both her hands on the table in shock, her head quickly turning between Millie and I. Her reaction, combined with a sudden grin from Millie, has me an in indescribable level of terrified. Well, today's just full of coincidences. I happen to be the leader of the writing club on campus. We have our first meeting of the semester tomorrow afternoon if you're interested. She retrieves her wallet, pulls out a small business card, and scribbles a room number and time on the back before passing it over to me. If the art club doesn't work out for you, I'd be more than happy to help however I can with your writing course. Wait! Wait, 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 wait! Olive, the writing class is going to be a real challenge. If we're thinking of the same one, Millie took it last semester, and I swear, I saw her writing eight-page papers every other week. This is so funny. They're, they're gonna be like fighting over Olive joining their clubs. <laughs> I love this. Also, yeah, I loved Millie's, like, smug little hair. Yeah, well, actually. <laughs> oh, this is fun. I had already been nervous about how tomorrow was going to go, and that definitely doesn't help matters. You're exaggerating. Besides, that textbook Olive was poring over didn't look like much of a pleasant experience either. It didn't, that's true. I can't argue that point. I can! I've had the same professor in another class. We'll hardly ever use the book. Either way, a little bit of studying and some doodling is a heck of a lot easier than what you went through. Says the woman spending days at a time stressing about inspiration and color composition. Caprice glares daggers into what I had assumed to be her friend. A far cry from her smile yesterday. Millie pretends not to notice, going back to her sandwich after I tuck the card away in my back pocket. She, she's so proud of herself right now. <laughs> I love this. She's so, she's so proud of herself. I turn to Haley, looking for some kind of explanation. I met with a raised glass, the half-melted ice clanking against it as she shakes it around. Lemon lime. Thanks. Coming right up. Time for that refill. Oh, poor Olive. Ha <laughs> ha. Here we go, it's writing time. The writing class ran longer than I would have liked. The professor definitely belongs in that course with a clear love of language and words. A lot of words. The syllabus didn't enter our hands until 10 minutes after the estimated end of class, and the rigorous requirements listed on it didn't make me feel any better. Given Millie's experience in the class, I want to go into the club today feeling optimistic, but in truth, neither leader has done a spectacular job of selling me so far. I mindlessly turn the card over in my hands a few times as I navigate the halls of the building. At 26A, 5.15pm. Judging by the advertisement for a car repair shop on the front, it's probably some trash she had yet to throw away before she handed it to me. Before she handed it off to me. The information on the back is a lot more useful to me at the moment. I'm on the right floor at this point at least. Now it's just a matter of finding the right door. The only thing unusual in this hall is a lanky guy fidgeting nervously outside of one of the rooms. The club room, as it so happens. Um... Huh? Oh! Given by the way he jumps back, it seems my presence had gone unnoticed. Ninja Olive. Oh, hello! 
Hi, who's this? Hi. Who's this guy? Who are you? Getting a decent look at his face. Something feels familiar, but I can't quite place it. His widened eyes seem to imply he's come to a similar sort of conclusion. Olive? Olive Pen? Wait, their surname is Pen. <gasps> That's so beautiful. <laughs> That's such a perfect surname. I'm. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's me. And you're... We shared a few classes back in high school. I don't blame you if you don't remember. I go by Darren now. Darren Baker. Ah! I see. <laughs> I see. Oh, this is happy. This is nice. It's not until he offers a feeble handshake that I realize who I'm talking to. We weren't super close or anything, but having a friend of any kind around after a little over a year of solitude is enough to get a smile out of me. Ah, uh, I remember. Uh, don't worry. You're looking good. Ah, uh, I love this. And you're looking the same as ever. Glad to see college hasn't changed you much. Uh, well, I think I might be overdue for a little change, honestly. I end my greeting with a small chuckle to play it off, which seems to satisfy him as he retains his smile. If only he knew the half of it. As much as I'd like to do a bit of catching up and continue avoiding the matter at hand, I am becoming more and more aware of how late I'm running. Anyway, are you here for the riding club too? I glance down at the card to triple check the details before returning my attention to him. He gives a dejected nod without so much as even glancing at it. Yeah, that was the plan, at least. Something up? It's just more crowded than I was imagining it. Lots of noise and talking over each other. I poked oh. my head in for a second and that was enough. Yeah, that sounds like the kind of club that I would walk in and immediately walk out again. Eesh. Yeah, I can't blame you. It's good to hear that it's active, at least. I can definitely sympathize with Darren's situation, and it's a sentiment I'd echo in any other scenario. But sidestepping it is out of the question. I've already committed to checking out Caprice's club. So at this point, it's better to get as many options as I can. Well, want to check it out together? I haven't been looking forward to it much either, to be honest. But having a friend there would help. Yes, and then if it's too much, they can just sit at a table at the back together and ignore everyone else. <laughs> also, Sivalhun, hello, welcome. Thank you for the hydrate. I had a sip while Olive was speaking. But welcome, welcome! Uh, oh, uh, no pressure, though. I fully expect him to turn down the offer, not being shackled to the obligation like me. But instead, his face lights up. No, no, it's fine. It sounds good to me. Yeah. Ah, solidarity! As soon as the door opens, the noise Darren warned me about becomes obvious. The corners of my mouth already felt heavy, but that's only intensified as I discover the source of the squabbling. <laughs> ah! Hi! I recognize those faces. Hello! <laughs> In the back of the room is a small group of people talking amongst themselves, scouring through the counters for supplies. The lone woman sitting at one of the desks is entirely silent, tapping away on her phone as noise assaults her from both sides of the room. And in the front is Caprice, arguing with Millie, of course. 
Of course they are. What else would it be? <laughs> ah. It sure is convenient that you'd pick today to do this. Ah. It has to be today. There's hardly any time left to get all of this sorted. You couldn't even wait a couple hours? If you just signed the papers, we'd be out of here in 15 minutes, tops. What papers are these? The two continue their back and forth a bit longer, before suddenly stopping and swiveling their heads as the door fully opens to reveal myself and Darren. Oh, what a coincidence. What a surprise. Fancy seeing us here. You didn't know we'd be here, right? You knew I was coming. You heard Millie offer as much yesterday. That didn't necessarily mean you'd show up. I thought for sure you wouldn't have bothered. Millie seems eager to respond, but instead just stands there silently fuming. The threat of a retort almost scares me more than if she had actually chosen to speak up. Capri seems unfazed by her friend's body language and instead turns her attention to the back of the room. Hey, you guys! This is Olive, the person I was telling you about. Oh, there they are! There they are! Oh, oh, oh! I love them, I love them. I love them. Mwah. The woman glued to her phone doesn't react, but the four in the back turn around to face us. Having just a couple sets of eyes on me is enough to make me want to shrink away into my vest, let alone six. Oh, hi. I'm Allison. Nice to meet you. Caprice has told us a bunch about you already. I love that Allison's all the little faces, all the little expressions, all the emotions. Aww. And Yaz, I, I love that she's short. I, I feel like, like I really love the height difference between these two. It's very good. Got a soft spot for the height differences. It, it's, it's good. Good content. <laughs> A small pause seems to imply that's the end of that interaction, much to my relief. Allison bumps her elbow into the arm of the woman beside her, which unfortunately seems to be enough to keep it going. Eileen. Yeah, good seeing you. We're a bit busy now, though. Oh, it has us like the playing card suits. That, f that suits her so well. <laughs> suits. <laughs> Definitely suits her. Hee <laughs> hee. And with that, she turns back around and continues piling miscellaneous coloured papers and craft supplies under her arm. With a small sigh, Allison resumes her work as well. Confident she's not going to be getting any more out of the two, Caprice focuses her attention to another pair of students. A tall and intimidating man casually leaning on the countertop, and a stern-faced woman watching intently as Eileen and Allison pick away at the supplies. The big guy's Wallace. Hi, Wallace. Our newest member, excluding you. So she got him. I, of, of course he joined. Like, Caprice... Once Caprice sinks her claws in, that, that person is joining the art club. <laughs> But there he is! Hi! And then who are you? And the last one? She's not with us. Ah. A surprising amount of venom in that response. More than I'd think Caprice capable. He, thank you for the head pat. And thank goodness for that. Tanya, hello. Name's Tanya. Thanks for asking. I'm with the writing club. Millie told me you'd be coming today. Didn't mention there being two of you, though. On that note... Hey. Having had enough of this distraction, Millie makes her way back behind the desk at the front. She pulls out a pen and swiftly jots down her signature before beckoning Caprice over to retrieve the paper from her. Here's my signature as assurance that I'll finish filling out the form after the meeting if it makes you feel better. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to actually have a meeting today, so I would appreciate it if you <laughs> hurried up your pillaging. Caprice opens her mouth ready to protest, then decides better of it. She gives the contents of the paper a quick skim. It must satisfy her as she joins her clubmates in the back of the room. 
Anyway, come in, you two. I was expecting Olive, but it's nice to see someone else <laughs> joining us today as well. My name's Millie. Nice to meet you. Oh, that works out so well then as well, because then it's like if the art club has the four of them and then there's also four here as well, th th then, then Olive will just make either side five, whichever they join, because they are joining one. They're, they're, there's no way they're not going to join one. <laughs> But, oh, this is so nice. I love new characters. She extends her hand towards Darren, who reluctantly takes it. He's so nervous. I just want to I just want to give him a hug and tell him everything's okay. <laughs> Darren. Hi. With a small shake and a smile, she ushers us to a pair of desks, then makes her way up to the front of the room. She shuffles around in her bag, looking for some sort of reference material. You've got quite the fan club, huh? <laughs> the sound of my forehead hitting the desk is louder than any kind of argument Caprice and Millie could have. A sharp clearing of the throat from the front of the room is enough to drag my gaze back up, albeit slowly. With all of that finally out of the way, it's time to begin the first writing ah. club meeting of the semester. Welcome. Ah, it's, it's time. It's the fall in love with Millie time. <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry, I need to... I gotta sit properly. I'm not sitting properly again. I'm, I, was, I was getting so stressed out by the arguments. I was like shrinking back in my chair. <laughs> but yay, all the, the introductions. Oh wait, except one. There was the the other girl too, who we have not been introduced to. But I'll oh, just she she is that smile. I love that smile. Ah, I love this. Oh, look at her. Front and center of the room, open book in hand, Millie definitely gives off a natural kind of teacher vibe. This club's one of the oldest in the school, so we have a lot to live up to. Tanya introduced herself already. She's been helping me keep things moving for a while now. The talkative girl is Heather. 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 Giving up on her phone for the distractions, Heather finally sets it down and gives a disinterested wave in response to Millie's equally lukewarm introduction of her. <laughs> so, it's not typically this busy. Heather smirks, though it's hard for me to gauge why. Oh no, I'm so sorry about the bad first impression. Things are typically a lot... quieter. I could imagine this being the kind of club that's usually silent, to be honest. Like, I could just see them all sat there reading books together and... just, like, comfortable silence. Whereas the art club is more like people would try and be silent and Caprice would have none of that. <laughs> I don't even need to turn my head to imagine the look on Caprice's face. I brace for a response, but oddly enough, it never comes. While I'm sure the news is a relief to Darren, I can't help but deflate a little. It's my fault for getting my hopes up, but even I expected more than three people. Granted, Caprice's four isn't exactly a huge improvement. Don't let the size fool you, though. What we lack in quantity, we make up for in quality. Here, look at this. She approaches Darren and I once again, passing him the book she was holding just moments prior. <laughs> May her healing rays bl bless my throat. Thank you, I'm gonna need it to keep reading. You know what, I'm gonna have some of my tea. I'm gonna have some of my tea flask. warm drink to soothe the throat. Tea. Here we go. Oh, and Mary. Mary's been sick. Oh, I hope you recover soon. It's always awful being sick. I hope you feel better soon. <laughs> Be blessed by, by Millie's healing race. 
Also, Cora Syllabus, hello. Hi, hi. Be blessed by Millie. She approaches Darren and I once again, passing him the book she was holding just moments prior. I lean in to catch a glimpse and am met with chicken scratch. A lot of it. There's more ink than paper, and that trend continues as Darren flips a few pages. The club can be a great source of inspiration and technical know-how if you'll allow it. Ooh. I filled up this entire notebook and a couple others just in my first semester here. Wow, okay. And how many pages have you filled out recently? <gasps> she can speak. Nice. The smirk from earlier has yet to fade, and as a matter of fact, has only grown bigger with her new remark. A grumble from the back of the room, from Wallace, if I had to guess, based on the tone, follows shortly after. Plenty, thank you. The club's recent downsizing hasn't had any influence on that. Ah. Yeah, I, I can imagine, like, if, if Wallace left the writing club to join Caprice's art club. <laughs> Even with the rest of her club, all two of them, not really winning me over, the work Millie has on display is impressive. At the very least, I feel like I could confidently rely on her, which is a plus. Millie knows her stuff, I'll admit that, but there's only so much one person can do. <laughs> uh, I jump a bit in my seat, throwing my head around to find Caprice standing over mine and Darren's shoulders eyeing the contents of the notebook herself. Uh... Hi? All I'm saying is that the art club, the entire club, would be able to help you. Unlike the writing club, our little circle looks out for each other. The whole club. I, I, love, I love seeing the club together like this. Ah, uh, I love seeing how short Allison is. <laughs> Don't drag us into this. Too late for that. <sighs> Without averting her gaze from the cabinet's innards, Eileen manages to swiftly shut him down. Bold of you to hype your club up like that, given you didn't even bother to finish the paperwork to legitimize it in time for the fair. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, that sounds like a very Caprice thing. I got a set of keys for a room and a bunch of like-minded artists. Being recognized as official would just be a nice bonus. I'm pretty sure I have a pair of keys that you commandeered for yourself. Haha. <laughs> ah, uh, I mean, the art club basically only has Eileen as their expert. <laughs> no, I don't know. I get the impression from Caprice that she'd be the type to, like, read the, the textbooks, like... Well, no, not so much the textbooks. I think if she spotted something that looked interesting, she would, like, go deep and in investigate that herself. Like, look it up herself in more fun ways. So she probably has a lot of knowledge. It might not be the knowledge that's needed at the time, but I think she would know a lot just because she likes it. So she'd look, un look into it more. <laughs> Vicky Amaru, hello! Welcome, welcome! Welcome on in! And Nugs too, hi! It's the gay game. It's it's the actual game now and not just the prequel. Welcome to Twofold. Hello. Hello. Wallace would be... Yeah, I, th I think Wallace would be knowledgeable too. I feel like Wallace would also be the type where if you're stuck on something and he didn't know about it, he'd be like, give me a sec. Let me just look that up. Let me, let me Google that real quick. <laughs> Alison would be the same. Alison, I, I don't think she'd have much knowledge on, like, art history and stuff, but she'd be very enthusiastic in trying to help. She'd be like, well, I don't know that, but I'll help you find out how to know that. Um, Eileen. <laughs> hey, whose side are you on here? Caprice's explosion is met with a small smile from Alison and an even smaller smirk from Eileen. They don't seem to be taking this too seriously, which, honestly, may be a point in their favor. <laughs> Thank you for offering to share your space, by the way, Millie. We appreciate it. Ooh. Even if Caprice won't say so. He's doing the little, like, uh, press her fingers together. I, uh, I want to put her in my pocket. 
I want to put Allison in my pocket and run away with her. <laughs> I'll take Eileen with me. Come on, not you too. You're very welcome, Allison. <laughs> I love that when it's when it's like the the sneaky like. <laughs> Millie has a genuine talent for mixing sincerity and an underlying smugness almost perfectly. Anyway, if you're all done chatting it up, we're gonna need you out of here soon. We were promised 15 minutes and you've already used up five of them. Yeah, yeah, we're going. Just give us a few minutes to finish grabbing everything. <sighs> Wanna help us out, new kid? Eileen continues her work, not bothering to turn around as she addresses me. Likely for the best, given the mutual surprise on Caprice and I's faces. Huh? If you're being dragged into the group, you may as well start getting used to it sooner rather than later. I love that Eileen's just like, yeah, been here, done that. Uh, you, you are joining the art club. <laughs> I'm sorry, one second. Oh man, it's not going from the chat window. That's so annoying. I, I need to find a new chat overlay that updates when I delete messages. Ba -ba -ba -bum. Um, oh, it, it, it worked right as I refreshed the thing anyway. Okay, well, we're fine anyway. Someone say something. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I just removed it all. Uh, but I love that Eileen is literally just here like, yeah, I'm... I, I was in your position too, you are joining. What? No! I was gonna bring them to an actual club meeting. Show them the best we had to offer. I had plans. Oh, Caprice's plans! No, they're all being ruined. Ah... <laughs> uh something thank you also jack hello welcome 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 on in welcome to twofold it's twofold tuesday and i'm gonna have a sip of monster thank you for the hydrate <laughs> let me have a sippy yeah i guess i guess i need to just like hit the ban immediately i usually go for like block so they're just like gone entirely, but that doesn't seem to remove it from the chat window. I wonder if there's something I can figure out myself to like fix that. I may have to look into that. But thank you, Bob! Oh, Caprice's plans, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I didn't expect Caprice to object before me. Eileen merely shrugs in response. I also haven't really committed one way or another. Oh, I've heard that one before. <laughs> Three times, actually. Yeah. Jeez, what did I do to earn all this sass today? To be betrayed like this, time and time again? It's more than my poor heart can take. She's so dramatic, I love it. <laughs> Caprice cranes her neck back and places a hand on her forehead in a display of theatrics, prompting a couple of smiles out of Allison and Wallace. Far cries from the smirk that seems permanently glued to Heather's face. What is Heather's deal? I, I want to know more about her. <laughs> the thought of... The thought of Heather is enough to remind me of my current situation, and I snap back to focus my attention on Millie and Darren. The latter seems content to keep paging through Millie's notebook as a means of staying out of the conversation, but Millie is obviously trying very hard to hide her transparent frustration with a smile. It's fine. It'll get them out of the room faster and we'll have time to catch up after you're done. Win-win, right? She couldn't sound more disappointed if she tried, and boy is she trying. I don't want to flake on Millie or Darren, given I willingly put myself in here with them. But at the same time... It'll only be a few minutes, and that'll tell me way more about the art club than a fully planned and rehearsed meeting would. It 
It's non-committal for now either way, so I guess it isn't a big deal, but it's hard not to feel anxious about it. <gasps> oh, 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 options, options. We are making our first save. We're saving. First choice, nine's a crowd. Okay. Okay, what are we doing? Oh goodness, oh goodness. Decisions. What should I do first? I don't know what to do first. I still haven't decided whether I want to aim for Caprice or Millie's route first. Poll? Yeah, let's do a poll. I'll do a poll. Let's do a cheeky poll. Why not? Give me a second. What do help art club stay in writing club? What are we doing? What should we do? Do I still have my overlay thing for polls on the screen? Um, I've got cookies and advertising choices. That's great. That's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for refreshing that, Twitch. Um, <laughs> it's meant to show the poll. <laughs> Hold on, can I? Okay, there we go. I got... <laughs> it reset my cookies. How could it? Here we go. Here's the poll. What are we doing? Are we are we helping the arc? Oh, it's even. Don't do this. Oh goodness me. Okay, we're we're leaning towards our club now. <laughs> Try make it a perfect 50-50 split. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, it's like it keeps edging back and forth either way. Oh, are you kidding me? Is it actually? No. <laughs> no. It actually is a perfect split. Oh my goodness. Okay, um. Okay, uh. <laughs> okay, I have... I have a D20. I have a D20 in front of me. <laughs> we did it, Caps, just for you. I can't believe it actually ended up being a perfect split. Oh, that's so funny. Amazing. Right, okay, I've got a D20 here. I have many D20s now, thank you. But welcome, welcome, welcome in everybody. Also, Sarah Cat, thank you for the resub. Thank you for subbing for 19 months. Welcome in. You joined at a great time. I've got my first choice and I'm really bad at making decisions. Therefore, I'm going to roll a D20. If it's odds, we're going to offer to help. If it's evens, we're going to stay my fellow in the pink cat room. girl. What is up indeed, the, the sky? <laughs> Oh, redeem! Oh, haiku redeem! Oh my goodness! Okay, thank you for the haiku redeem! A haiku about this choice. Which one do I choose? Should I stay or should I go? Oh no, it's even. <laughs> thank you for the haiku redeem. Uh, let me do another one too, a little bonus haiku. Uh, why can't you pick one? Now I have to choose a side. I can never choose. There we go. There's a bonus haiku to go with it. Right, I'm going to roll the D D20. If it's odd, then I stay and help. If it's even, I will stay put. That's a two. So that means we're staying put. Okay. Where's my cursor gone? Hold on. Oh, there it is. So we're staying. We're staying in the writing club. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna aim for Millie path first. Hehe. <laughs> Thank you. That was a terrible die roll as well. I got a two, but <laughs> but that's an even number. So we're staying put. Uh, we did agree to join the writing club. Therefore, we shall stay put in the writing club for now, and then we'll do the art club afterwards. But yeah, the. 
Well, my original plan was to check out the writing club, so I'm gonna stick with that for now. Thanks for the offer, though. I can't believe you managed to get a perfectly even split on the poll. I'm... <laughs> uh, well, can't say I didn't try. The response to my decision is lukewarm. The only one showing any kind of emotion over it being Caprice. A slight frown appearing only for a moment on her face, despite her earlier, earlier protesting. It doesn't last long, though, replaced quickly with her typical smile and a small wave before turning her attention back to her club. <gasps> Mari is a huge middle lover. I see. I see. So you're probably excited. <laughs> yeah. Part of me hates to turn down the chance to dig deeper into the art club, but I can't bring myself to split from Darren after inviting him in. I feel like I've gotten at least a decent grasp on their personalities, if not their talent. I really appreciate it. Bah. Just making sure, you know I still haven't made up my mind yet, right? I just want to hear more for now. I know, don't worry. Now, where were we? She rests her chin in her right hand for a moment, rewinding the past few minutes in her head. Uh, could we talk about the club itself some more, maybe? You mentioned downsizing? Ah, right. That. Millie's focus continues, though looking considerably more dour than seconds ago. After taking some time to choose her words, her expression changes once again to a warm smile, as if flipping a switch. Ah, oh, you'd have been fine with either, honestly. This isn't like Please Be Happy. Genuinely can't choose which side you like better. Oh, I, I was like that with Please Be Happy, though. I loved both, both sides of that. Like, I can't pick a favorite. I thought I was so in love with, with Aspen. And then with Juliet, I was just like, well, no, I'm, I'm, I love them both. I love them both in different ways because they both go into like such different stories. I really loved it. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm, I, every time I play a visual novel, I am going to get all of the, the options eventually. <laughs> I'm a completionist. I like knowing everything there is to do. So I, I will be doing both paths, but I guess we're going Millie first. <laughs> Well, everyone has to move on eventually. It just so happens that last year was the right time for a lot of people. It's just part of the college experience. Yeah, I, I said this before though as well, didn't I? In First Snow, I was like, I bet this is a situation where all of the club members are graduating. <laughs> and so there's nobody left. And I was spot on with that. <laughs> But yeah, I'm excited to do this too because there's new characters I don't know here. Like, I already know a lot about the art club members. So I think it'll be nice to do this, get to know all of the characters. And then we'll go back and do the art club one, like, already knowing all of the characters. Which I think would be a lot of fun. But yeah, I uh, don't really have a preference either. Oh, you went Caprice first because you two do art. That's a good reason. It's a decent reason to do it. See, I've dabbled in both, like, artistry and writing, but I'm I'm just a dabbler in both. I'm I'm not like, <laughs> I'm not proficient in either. Also, welcome back, Ikari. I hope things. I hope I hope the battery charges soon. <laughs> well rehearsed and squeaky clean, all in a matter of seconds. He never failed to impress, Prez. She is so snarky. Wow. What do you mean by that, Heather? Heather? I do love that little sneaky smirk, though. I know. <laughs> I'm unsure of how to process that, and it seems like Darren's in the same boat, with the only reaction from the three of us... Oh, with the only reaction from the three of us is a grimace from Millie. As self-appointed club historian, I oh. feel the need to point out that this great migration of yours only started after you took the reins, though. Oh! Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, wow. Um... 
Huh. Thank you, Heather. She seems lovely. No problem. As the last of the old guard, we have to look after each other, you know? Yeah. <laughs> wow, okay, I didn't expect that. <laughs> Confident that she's successfully gotten under Millie's skin, Heather returns to tapping away at her phone, smug expression never once leaving her face. What is her deal? Heather's done her job of getting me curious about Millie's influence on the club, but it feels utterly futile to ask Millie directly about it. Left unsure of how to continue this conversation, I turn to Darren. To my surprise, he seems unusually nonplussed about Heather's interruption. A smaller club suits me perfectly, actually. I was a lot more anxious when I came in originally and saw so many of you in here. Oh, I, I feel like that makes sense. He is anxiety led. <laughs> yes, exactly! You won't find a better place to express yourself if you're looking for peace and quiet. That's one way to look at it, I guess. Darren doesn't seem to match my skepticism, looking considerably more at ease with Millie's assurances. I must be doing a poor job of hiding my disapproval, as Millie is quick to shift gears once she redirects her attention to me. Uh, but just because we're quiet doesn't mean we're an empty room. Tanya, can I borrow you for a minute? Millie waves the woman in the back down. Oh, she's so cool. Tanya's so cool. I, I feel a little intimidated by her. I feel like if I met Tanya in real life, I would probably forget how to speak. <laughs> After giving the art club another cursory once over, she obliges her friend's request, casually striding up to the front of the room. Hey again. I want to give you two a proper introduction to Tanya. She's the most recent member, but she's already been a huge help. Hi. Tanya responds by grabbing at my hand and giving it a firm, very firm shake before repeating the process with Darren. Given the way he gently holds the hand in question after the fact, it's safe to assume her grip took him off guard as much as it did me. Millie Wu, you two over yet? Um... I think she might be getting there. Good to hear. Hmm... well... Two words, barely even words, are enough to get a simultaneous frown from Tanya and Millie. Still got some hang-ups? I'm just not sure the club has what I'm looking for, I guess. Well, let's see if we can address that. What are you looking for here? I love Millie's, like, problem-solver attitude. <laughs> uh, help with my writing class, assuming I stick with it. Yes, yes, I'm aware. Anything else? The expectation in her eyes begins to waver after a few seconds of prolonged silence, making me feel as though I've disappointed her with my response. Tanya, in contrast, is practically beaming. Is that all? Then you've got nothing to worry about. You couldn't ask for a better tutor than Millie here. She gives her friend a playful shake on the shoulder. What about you? What about me? I guess I was just hoping that I'd have more people around to bounce things off of than just the leader. Oh! Hmm. She sheepishly rubs her head as she thinks, making a mess of her hair in the process. That kind of thing isn't really my strong suit. I don't know if calling on me for writing advice would be the best idea you've ever had. Bah. Then, then why are you in this club? Oh, I presume, like, to get better. Like, <laughs> duh, why did I say that? Before I even have a chance to air out my concerns, Tanya bounces back, pushing Millie forward. I told you, though. If there's anyone who could single-handedly drag you across the finish line, it's Millie here. Right? Well, I'd certainly try my best. And so the pitch ends. Closer to a whimper than a bang. 
It looks like Darren's probably been won over, sitting upright and excited at the prospect at the premise of an empty classroom. But that same promise of a near deserted club makes me sink into my seat. I reach over and grab the notebook from Darren's desk, flipping through it as I absorb as much of the barely legible print as I can. Uh <laughs> Oh, Darren reminds you of the cute NPC you all played last week. Oh, I love that. I, I've got to say, like, I do have a, a soft spot for anxious characters. I always just want to hug them and tell them everything's going to be fine. Sorry, my chair is so squeaky. I don't know why it's so squeaky. This club's likely a wash, but it'd be hard to deny Millie's own personal expertise on the subject. I wonder if she'd really be enough. Are you doubting that face? Are you doubting that face, Olive? <laughs> so? Millie sounds as uncertain as I feel, even with her friends still shaking her arms with a reassuring pride. I'll think about it. Thanks. Ah, much to think about. As the next day. Oh, Darren's your favorite writing club member. Oh, I, I love him already as well. I'm I I really love that like really sweet moment of recognition as well. <laughs> it was really nice. Honestly, I feel like Darren would probably be really good help too. Like he seems very quiet, but I think he'd be quite good at helping out like with with creative writing stuff like he clearly is interested in writing in the first place to want to join the club so he's probably got knowledge too like don't don't doubt darren's experience i, I don't think it would just be millie and i mean heather is like one of the originals she's she's probably she probably knows a fair bit too whether she would help or not she she might charge she might be like, yeah, I can help you out. That'll be 10 bucks. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 love, I love meeting all the new characters. Anyway, here we go. It's Friday. Every student's favorite day of the week. Perhaps it's my imagination, but even as I head into the cafeteria, the chattering of the people around me takes on a slightly happier tone than the days before. As for me, my mind is still occupied with thoughts of clubs, classes, and my last-ditch gamble to survive the semester. My stomach grumbles, the smell of food from the tables only reminding me of my hunger. <laughs> How to be broker in college. Pay Heather. <laughs> After skipping breakfast in my rush to get to school, I need something more than a cookie from the nearby cafe to get me through the day. The food here is nothing amazing, but I'm hardly picky. At least lunch will be a brief break from my worries where I can forget... Caprice? Yeah, I knew Olive. it. Hi. Olive, hey! Hi. So much for that. Caprice waves at me from one of the tables. She has an uncanny knack for detecting my presence in a room, however crowded and busy it may be. I resign myself to my fate and take a seat as the woman next to her gives a small, polite wave. Hi, Olive. Hi. Do 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 what? Seeing her like with the sprite now, like I. D d <laughs> I really like it's. I'm not even interested in like a oh my goodness women perspective. I literally just want her to be my sister. I want to pat her on the head and tell her she's doing great. Like play board games with her. <laughs> the two make an odd contrast. Alison's shy, almost nervous greeting in stark difference to Caprice's overabundant energy. So managed to survive Millie's lecturing after we left yesterday? It was pretty quiet and low-key. Nothing that extreme. By quiet, you mean boring, right? <laughs> oh my, I love that expression. That's so good. <laughs> I love that. 
Oh, twofold is third person instead of first person just because so many people said they wanted to see more Alison in First Snow. I am so glad because I, I wholeheartedly approve. And also, yes, me too. <laughs> I wanted to see more Alison. I, I love this. I'm so happy. I'm so glad. I, I, I really want to ruffle her hair. Hey now. You're an all star. Get your game on. Yep, it was boring and terrible. The typical writing club MO. Heather, why are you even a member? If you hate it so much. Like, what? <laughs> now Heather has appeared, which can only make things better. Even though she's decided to walk up and invite herself into our conversation, she doesn't seem all that interested in giving us her full attention. Engrossed in her phone as usual, she barely looks up to address us. Uh, what? Caprice is visibly annoyed, with Heather's only reaction being the corner of her mouth tugging upward. Heather's passion for pressing people's buttons doesn't stop with Millie, it seems. Well, uh... Olive, don't feel obligated to give them the time of day. We'll get you through the semester easy peasy. Right, Allie? Yeah? Uh... Yeah, of course. I'm filled with confidence. Right again. The club is nothing more than a waste of space. W hey! Nobody asked you! What? We're agreeing, aren't we? Why is she like this? What is your problem? What what happened to you? What happened to you? What's your tragic backstory? Or are you just awful? <laughs> Heather's managed to frustrate Caprice into silence, as impressive a feat as any. She seems to notice my bemused reaction, face suddenly rebounding into a grin. I still owe you a proper meeting. You'll come, right? I guess... I guess we did kind of agree to that. How do I keep getting caught in these conversations? <laughs> both could be both, yeah. We'll see. She has a tragic backstory that made her start acting mean, and then she realized it was she was having a lot of fun being a mean girl. <laughs> it's okay. We can we can help her. We can fix her. We can... <laughs> Maybe. Would it be worth it? We'll see. We'll see. Let's give her a nice little therapy session. Be like, okay, what is the root cause of your uh, animosity towards others? <laughs> and all the ones after that? Well, I... <laughs> Allison looks like, like a, a terrified bunny rabbit right now. <laughs> She's just so caught in this. Just, you can tell she has no idea what to do. I'll see you then. I gotta take care of some stuff for the fair. Bye, Ellie! She shoots Heather one last venomous look before hopping out of her chair, beginning to head out of the cafeteria. What about food? Already ate! Bye! Bye! How odd. Must have just been keeping Allison company. Wait, what was that she mentioned about a fair? Before I can call out and clarify, Heather once again speaks up. Nobody asked, Heather. <laughs> Why did you even come to our club when you were already playing house over with Mommy Caprice? <laughs> what? Huh? Huh? Allison takes to her feet and grimaces at the comment. I can't help but match her expression. Please don't call her that. Just keeping my options open. This might be a good opportunity to help with that. Oh, goodness me. I've got a member of each club in front of me, though not for long, as Allison picks up her tray of food and slips it onto the nearby counter. 
Heather looks unmoved by Alison and Caprice's abrupt departure. She takes a seat at the table next to me, barely looking up from her phone. Occasionally she'll sip from the can of soda she brought with her. She doesn't seem particularly enthused by the writing club, so I figure she wouldn't spare the unpleasant details. That said, Alison does seem like the honest type, even if she is more loyal. If I hurry, I can still catch her. Oh. Ah. I knew this would happen. See, I instantly want to just go chasing after Alison, but I think what I'm going to do now is I'm not going to do another poll because my plan of action here is like for the prologue part. Now that I've picked Millie as the first one, I'm just going to pick every option that aligns with the writing club so that when I go back and do it for the art club, I can just go through and pick every option for the art club as I go, because I think that would be a fun way to do it. <laughs> So, all right. Uh, <laughs> I love the, the, the text here being like, uh, anyone's a better option than Heather, or uh, her perspective may help, but... <laughs> yeah, let's talk to Heather. I really want to do this, yeah. Spill the tea, sis. Uh, what the... <laughs> oh, here we go. I had intended to get some food, but that can wait. This is likely as close to her full attention as I'll ever get. So, um, about the writing club. Yeah, I love how the little, the little smiles and stuff when you, when you mouse over them. Don't ask me. That was fast. But you're a member, right? Sharp as attack. I was worried it may have flown over your head yesterday. She is charming, wow. Why couldn't Tanya have been the one to find us here? I'm tempted to cut my losses and just walk away. But are meetings typically like yesterday? Who knows? I only show up often enough to remind them I'm still around. I'd imagine things are much less exciting with only Millie and her flunky loitering in a room together, though. Wow. So Millie's the only one doing any actual writing, huh? Oh, don't you worry about that. Tanya and I hand in papers every now and again if Millie asks. Gotta keep in the boss's good graces, you know how it is. Wow. And you're doing a fantastic job of that, I'm sure. If you're asking about the number of willing participants, though, I guess you're right on the money. I don't know if I'd call a group like that the writing club, really. You can call it a club all you want, but it's just Millie's hobby at this point. If she wasn't so obsessed, it'd be long gone by now. Oh, this feels so sad. <laughs> As soon as the old guard graduated, everyone left with them. It was just a bunch of friends. The writing side was totally just in the name. Mm. Putting her phone down, she leans her chair back and begins to rock dangerously while staring up at the ceiling. It feels like she's talking more with herself than me at this point. She's sad because all her friends left. <laughs> That's still no excuse to act like that around other people. I wonder what I'll do once the thing's put out of its misery. If it's that much of a bother, why go there in the first place? To kill time. That's it? That's it. What do you want, an essay? Much as I want to think less of her for it, there's plenty of people who just go to clubs to pass the day. If what she says is true, that's all the club was ever... Oh, that's all the club was ever for before Millie tried to give it a point. As I ponder, Heather becomes restless. She stands and gives a loud stretch. I'm gonna go get another drink. You want anything? If you're offering, I... No, she wasn't. <laughs> and she's gone. I guess I should have seen that coming. 
As she walks off, I sigh in frustration. It looks like no matter which club I go for, I'm going to be in for a trial. With class still some time ahead of me, I find myself wandering the halls, going over my choices in my head. Oh, okay, so when she implied that the club's downsizing was Millie's fault, she was totally just being mean then? I don't, I don't even think it's that. I think what happened is, like, the ones in charge who were just using it as a hangout space, when they graduated and Millie was put in charge, she was probably really excited, like, yes, we can actually start writing in the writing club now. And then as soon as the people who were just using it as a hangout space were like, wait, you expect us to actually do stuff now? They would just leave then. So th they, w they probably left because the writing club started to focus on writing. <laughs> but that's because Millie wanted the writing club to include writing. So it's, I can see why Heather would say that. It'd be like, yeah, it's your fault. Because if you just l left it as a hangout space, then people would still hang out here. But then it's not a writing club. Like, I, it's, oh, it's devastating. Like, especially when Millie is clearly so passionate about writing. Like, that whole little notebook just completely full. You can tell she really cares. Honestly, it makes me want to join the writing club even more. <laughs> yeah, the, the writing club became the writing club. And then everyone who is just slacking off is like, oh, I'll, I'll just leave. Huh. Yeah, I know, it must be so rough for Millie. I, I feel really bad for her. She seems really sweet. And I, oh, that makes it feel even worse knowing that Caprice has managed to poach Wallace as well now. Like, knowing that Wallace joined the art club too. It, I think I'm suddenly understanding that tension between Millie and Caprice a bit more. Oh, poor Millie. Yeah, I, I think I want to I want to join the writing club just so just just for Millie's sake. I feel bad for her. Caprice has got some people now. She'll be fine. They'll be fine. With class still some time ahead of me, I find myself wandering the halls, going over my choices in my head. Hey. Oh, hey. I just about bump into Haley, who is carrying some poster board and other materials. Whoa, hey, you need some help? Without answering, she shoves some of her supplies in my direction, which I take. I already have a general idea of where she was heading. The gymnasium, right? Smart. Come on, you've been drafted. <laughs> I love these two. She goes, and I follow. Yeah, oh yeah, me too, Rika! I, w I, wanna, I wanna hear more, like, from Wallace. I wanna have a really good conversation with Wallace and be like, Hey, you've been in both clubs, right? So, what, what's going on? <laughs> I wanna know his perspective, because I'm so curious. So, how'd the meeting go yesterday? <laughs> um... You didn't hear about it? Oh, I heard tons of things. But I'm interested in your perspective. Smart. I would love nothing more than a five minute mental break from the Caprice and Millie war. Unfortunately, it looks like something I won't be able to avoid anytime soon. Well, I'm not even entirely sure what happened. It felt like a sudden whirlwind. Yeah, sounds like them. As we enter the large building, I see that the area has been filled with tables arranged in rows. There are students running around, uh, running about, readying their booths. Hey, uh, where are we taking all this? Over here. I follow her to a, to a table. Or what's supposed to be a table, anyway. Instead, I find two smaller booths cramped inside the same small space, covered in red and blue cloth. Ah! Yeah. One has a very formal-looking sign which reads Creative Writing. The other has a very slapdash sign, simply reading Art, clearly written by the same hand. 
You get the rundown on how they're sharing a spot already? Nope. Um... More or less. I remember them packing up a lot more than just a couple tablecloths and posters, though. Oh, oh I wonder if that's what the form was for. I, I bet the form was because Caprice missed the sign-ups to have an actual club. So she made an arrangement with Millie to share, to share one spot for two clubs, maybe? The art club is off turning all that into brochures and other promo material for the two right now. This is all just bare bones stuff. Yeah, Allison mentioned something about that. Oh yeah! <laughs> oh yeah, she did. All the stuff about the fair. Good times. I can't see how this could go terribly in any way. I love when the rival teams color code themselves. Me too! And I love that they're like red and blue. It feels so perfect. I'm surprised Millie trusts them enough to handle that. Haley tucks her armful of supplies safely under the writing club's desk. I follow suit, emptying my hands as she lifts the cloth up for me. Millie gets along well enough with all of them. It won't be an issue. Ha. Uh, Could've fooled me. Things are just complicated right now is all. You saw how they were at the diner. Yeah. Yeah, I think I can... I could probably guess why things are complicated. Are you talking about their friendly small talk or them trying to poach me from each other? Yes. <laughs> That's why I called it complicated. She brings her hand to her headphones, debating pulling them over her ears. After a moment, she thinks better of it, deciding to instead lean lazily against the writing table. You're committed at this point, right? You're gonna be picking one or the other? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's about as far as I've gotten in my thinking, though. No particular feelings so far? Ugh, oh, tons of feelings. Most of them dread. It all sort of cancels each other out. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, speaking of color coding, does Olive wear green because of her name? Because of their name, or because of... I Maybe it's both. Maybe they just happened to like green. Like, it, it could just be like a really cool coincidence that they, they their name is Olive and they like the color Olive. <laughs> Very possible. But I, I do love how each of the characters has like a, a distinct like color associated with them. I really like it. It's more, I think it's more just like cool design perspective. It's not, it's not meant to be like an intentional, haha, check this out. Yeah, I don't think there's anything lore attached to it. It's just like cool design stuff. But I really like it. I, 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 I just, I'm just such a sucker for color schemed things. I just, anytime there's an opportunity to have like color coordinated things, I really love it. I love color coordinated things. Ah, oh, but yeah, I, I, I do love how they all have different colors. Well, good luck. Thanks, we're probably gonna need it. Wait, what's up? That was just Millie's stuff. Gotta head over to the art room now. Want me to come with you? I've got it covered, thanks. Once again, the headphones coming up signify the end of the conversation. Well, she's straightforward. Olive is green because green is not a creative color. No! 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 I'd forgotten about Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Now I've just remembered the whole thing again. Thank you for that. <laughs> but yeah, Olive uses they, them pronouns. And then all of the other main characters so far seem to be she, her, except for Darren and Wallace, who are both he, him. From what I am aware of so far. And once again, the headphones coming up signify the end of the conversation. That's why I always he wear headphones too. Whenever I go out, <laughs> I always have a pair of headphones with me. And it's like, when I put the headphones on, that means I am no longer available for conversation. 
She pulls herself up from the table and starts making her way past me without any further elaboration. It may be impossible to decipher Millie and Caprice's going-ons, but trying to get a read on their roommate is an entirely different experience. I debate sticking around to catch her again, but decide against it and make my way out of the auditorium, going out of my way to leave through the opposite doors. Have I seen the newer don't... I, I, I don't know. Depends what you mean by newer. I've watched a lot of them. I don't know if there have been more released since I last looked into it. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I watched them, but I've, I, I've seen quite a few. Quite a few. Uh, ever play a hat in time? Uh, I've, never, I've not played it, but I have seen other people playing it and I've seen stuff about it. But, oh, Haley looks like a grown-up hat kid. I can kind of see it. I can see that. <laughs> Oh, we we need to get Haley a hat. Oh, but then she wouldn't be able to put on her headphones because they're like the 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 full headphones that go over the top of the head. Next day. We are learning so much whilst still not knowing anything. I love it. But yeah, I think it's like you can you can tell that they're all really good friends. Like the fact that they're roommates for a start, they would not be roommates if they did not get along well with each other and love each other. But I think there's probably a lot of animosity over Wallace joining the art club. I think that's going to be like part of the tensions. Like, I don't know for sure that there, there could be other stuff that's just not been mentioned. But I think Wallace leaving the writing club when the writing club is already so precariously nothinged to join the art club, I feel like Millie's probably got a lot of resentment for Caprice over there. And Caprice being Caprice, she she might not even fully like realize the extent of it, because I get, I get the impression Millie would try and hide how upset she would be by it. She seems the type to mask her emotions. She'd be there smiling and saying, I'm fine. And you'd be able to tell she's not fine, but not any further than that. Like, it would be like, I'm fine, and we're not going to talk about it. Goodbye. I was joking about a therapy session with Heather earlier, but I feel like we need a Heather... We need, like, a therapy session with all of them. <laughs> I want to help them all. I just want to help them all. I... I see them all struggling and I'm like, oh goodness, it reminds me of my past. Let me help you. <laughs> also, Akiri! Thank you, thank you for the hydrate posture check headpad. I'm gonna have a sippy of my drink. And I'll have a big stretch. Big stretch. <laughs> These are interesting theories. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> I'm I'm excited to see how right or wrong I am. It's it'd be so funny at this point if like I'm having all of these theories about Wallace and then later in the game it will just end up being like Millie just saying, "Oh, Wallace, well, he never came to club anyway, so I don't care about that." <laughs> like she's fully uninterested. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, uh, I guess we will see. We will see. Either way, therapy for everyone, please. I'm just here like, please, we gotta figure this out. Please, I love you all. <laughs> Sapphic stories are often just prolonged group therapy sessions. <laughs> honestly, honestly, I think they are. It's very true. Right, anyway. <laughs> Today marks a day so rare that I can't remember the last like it. Something so monumental, the full implications haven't yet set in. Oh my goodness. A day without school, study, or work. I want one of those, please. <laughs> the sizzling of bacon rings in my ears, its smell playing on my nose. With time on my hands for once, I've decided to start the day with a simple pleasure. The taste of eggs and bacon for a late breakfast. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. 
As I nudge the bacon with the spatula, I take a sip of the steaming coffee beside me. Unfortunately, my skills in cooking haven't translated to my skills as a barista, the concoction proving foul. Oh. And now we have the answer to what uh, Olive's monster flavor is, it's coffee. <laughs> it's like, uh, what, what energy drink are you? I'll just have a coffee. <laughs> If it weren't badly needed caffeine, I'd have tipped it out already. Just down it. Just just hold your breath and down it. <laughs> the little cactus sitting on my window still catches my eye. My pride and joy, as embarrassing as that may be to admit. Easy to take care of, too. Looks like you're doing better than me these days. My words to the, bah, my words to the plant go unheard. Living alone isn't the easiest thing. Every chore, meal, and errand needs doing myself, after all. But it is comfortable. I can do things on my own schedule and eat at my own pace. Solitude might not be easy, nor cheap, but it is simple. Pleased with the plant's quiet and unassuming company, I take another sip of my foul coffee. A distant ping from the couch announces, announces a received text. Considering how few people I know, it's either mom or work calling in to ask me help cover a shift. Knowing which I prefer, I turn down the heat on the stove and walk over to pick up my phone. Oh! Hover near the top or bottom or use the mouse wheel to scroll through text. That's so cool! That's so handy! <laughs> Unlike me, she had work today. I look at the time. Not even noon yet. If she's texting me now, she's probably just getting off her opening shift. Ollie, are you home right now? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> Mind if I drop by for a bit? Maybe over lunch? Sure. <laughs> They text exactly how I would expect them to text. Maybe not exactly. I, I could I could see them texting all in lowercase, to be honest. I feel like they would be a lowercase texter, but I, I love that it's just all very, very straightforward to the point. Great, see you then. No. See you. <laughs> She's fussing over me again, as she so often does in quiet moments. It's hard not to notice this happening more often now that I'm living alone, though she's never outright admitted that. Not that it really matters. I cherish any free time we get to spend together, and it's not like I had anything in particular planned for the day ahead. Besides, she can probably lend some more insight. Uh, oh, 9.45am, it's not a late breakfast. No, I, I think at this point it's it's midday. It's, it's like lunchtime-ish. If, if a... Uh, if their mum's just gotten off work, like, mum's, like, finished the morning shift and she wants to come over for lunch. Oh, the text said 9.45am. I didn't, I didn't spot that. <laughs> I didn't even pay attention to that. Oh, my goodness. But I think it's... I think it's meant to be around lunchtime-ish. Uh, not that it really matters... Ah, Olive having uppercase letters was a deliberate decision since it's a default autocorrect setting they just never bothered to turn off. No, honestly, wait. Yeah, you're right. I'm trying to think, if I type on my phone, yeah, it automatically just capitalizes the start of every... Every line. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. They They wouldn't care enough. They wouldn't care enough to bother to find the setting. They're just like, oh, look, it makes the words. That's good enough. Not that it really matters. I cherish any free time we get to spend together. And it's not like I had anything in particular planned for the day ahead. Besides, she can probably lend some more insight. Here we go, lunchtime! Lunchtime. 
Yeah, also, like, thinking about times and stuff as well, like, 9.45am, if you're used to getting up at, like, 6am or something, that would count as a late breakfast. Like, that's, that's nearly 10 at that point. <laughs> and honestly, like, in my head, I feel like 10am onwards, it becomes, like, brunch time. <laughs> I don't know, I don't really tend to have breakfast a lot of the time because my sleep is a mess and I don't wake up in the morning early enough. <laughs> so it's like, even if I have something that's like breakfast food, I'm usually having it around lunchtime anyway, so I just, I just call it lunch at that point. But yeah, I love the attention to detail, it's so good. Everything about this game so far is just like, you can tell how much love's been put into it and I'm, I'm also... I'm also putting love into it. I, it feel, I, that felt weird. I don't know if I worded that the way I intended to. Uh, I, I'm just gonna carry on, I think. Actually, I'm gonna have some monster. <laughs> Mom sits at the small table. It's shabby scuffed wood adorned with a small pastry box she, bro she brought with her from the diner. Thank you for the hydrate! You know what? I'll have some tea as well. <gasps> Wait, and tea! Yes. Yes, thank you. Read my mind. Let's have a sip of tea. Nice. It's not squeaking as much now. You can tell the tea level's going down. <laughs> but thank you for the hydrate! Mom sits at the small table. It's shabby scuffed wood adorned with a small pastry box she's brought with her from the diner. It's a bit of a comfort to know that even living apart, she still brings extra treats for me. I'm thankful I had a light breakfast. They consider bacon and eggs a light breakfast? That... That's not a light breakfast to me. <sighs> Honey, you really didn't need to cook for me. At least let me help. Oh, I love her. Oh, hi. I was going to cook lunch for myself anyway. Whether it's for one or two people, doesn't make that much difference. I carefully bring two plates over from the kitchen counter, each loaded with chicken, vegetables, and rice. Oh, anything carb-based is heavy? Really? I... I don't know. Eggs and bacon, like, it feels... That feels like a breakfast that would be super, super filling to me, which is why I would, I would like, in my mind, I'd be like, well, that's a heavy breakfast, because that's... I don't know, meat and eggs seems quite filling. I don't know. I'm, I'm used to, like, cereal for breakfast, so... <laughs> or, like, a pastry or something. I'd, I don't really have, like, cooked food for breakfast pretty much ever. Like, maybe on a special occasion we'll do, like, bacon and sausage and stuff, but I, I don't tend to have cooked breakfasts. Which is so funny when you consider, like, the stereotype of, like, the full English breakfast, which is all, like, the the eggs, bacon, toast, uh, ev everything all cooked up. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't have cooked breakfasts. Ah. Despite her protests, Mom's eyes widen at the meal as it's placed before her, still steaming away. This is better than having to cook for yourself. Aww. You deserve better than work food every other day anyway. No, oh, this is really sweet. I love this. She smiles excitedly at the plates, shifting the box to the side. Hmm, it looks as good as it smells. Thanks. So, how is work? I take my seat next to her upon placing down my own plate of food. Mom talks about her day as I sit and take a knife and fork in hand. <sighs> and she's yelling at me. Her baby is crying and her other kid, oh, I'm telling you, they had the most embarrassed look. But what can I do? Except apologize. And of course she didn't even tip. Sorry I wasn't there to help you deal with that. Oof. I'm glad you weren't there. Speaking of which, how's your day off been so far? Oh, boring. 
stressful. What did you do? Nothing. I sat around here. <laughs> mostly just a lot of thinking. Oh yeah, the thinking would be the stressful part. Ollie, it's your day off. At least take some time for yourself. With what's been going on... Still turn up about your classes, huh? Yeah, guess so. And things just keep getting more complicated. What do you mean? People. <laughs> I explained to her about the clubs, between the meeting from a couple days ago, the upcoming fair, and the feud between the two leaders. She listens attentively, her expression varying between interest and concern. I feel myself deflate further and further as I talk, the hopelessness of the situation becoming all the clearer as I put it into words. It never quite sunk in until now just how bad my options are. I really don't know what to do, Mom. Follow your heart. She has that soft, caring smile I've seen so many times in my life. I know it's tough, but look at it this way. Even if they're fighting, the club leaders have been nothing but nice to you, right? That is true. That is very true. Sure. Maybe a bit too nice. I just don't know how things will go. My whole college career hinges on this. You're more resilient than you give yourself credit for. I'm sure you'll pull through. Everyone wants you to do well. I know you won't regret your choice. Whatever it is. Oh, she is such a lovely mom. Oh, I want to give her a hug. Honestly, this is making me want to go and hug my own mom. <laughs> ah. I'm going to give her a big hug after the stream. That's easy to say. It's true, though. You're wasting your day off stressing over it. <sighs> Take the rest of the day for yourself. Relax, do something you enjoy. Don't make it another day of stress. That way you'll be going to this fair with a clearer head. That's really good good advice except our brains don't work like that i really wish they did but i feel like when i'm stressing out about something if i'm told to like just relax and stop thinking about it then i i, I can't like stop myself from thinking about it unless i distract myself with something yeah olive needs to find something to distract themselves with <laughs> oh true mom goals honestly Oh, if there's one point in twofold you're proud of, it's the parents. I love the parents so much. I've only met August so far, and I'm... I love her so much. I, big hug. The biggest hug. But uh, there's, there's, there's way more to be proud of than that. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love as well that I said after the stream I'm going to go down and give my mom a big hug. Like, as though I don't do that every day anyway. <laughs> I hug my mom all the time. I'm not generally a very huggy person, but it's different with my mom. Like, I, every time I see her, I'm just like, hi, arms out, give her a hug. That's easier said than done. She does have a point, though. I can't do anything more than I've already done at this point. It may not sit right with me that my future depends on people I barely know, but those two are who I'm stuck with. I have no choice but to gamble on this. I'll try. Uh, that's my Ollie. I believe in them. I believe. She gives me a hug and a kiss on the forehead. Now? She pulls out the pastry box from earlier and places it on the table. <gasps> Treat. Treat time, yes. I brought a slice for each of us. Which one do you want? I'll let you pick first. Inside lies two slices of pie. Signatures from the diner we work at. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> one slice of blueberry and one slice of cherry. Wow. I'm sure this has no meaning or implication that there's blue and red. Definitely not in any way. 
If I didn't know any better, I'd think she had done this on purpose. I thought that was going to come up with like an option then, like which slice of pie do you choose? <laughs> but uh, if it's down to me, I out of those, I would I would always pick cherry pie. I love cherry pie so much. Big cherry pie fan. I think when I'm thinking about pies, yeah, cherry pies are my favorite. Then I also like apple pie a lot. And then after that, I'm really indifferent. I'm not the biggest, like, pie fan. I just really like cherry pie. And I am partial to apple pie from time to time. But yeah, not, not really a big pie person. Mondays come around again. I took mom's advice and tried to relax after she left yesterday. I don't know if I succeeded. I feel like I've come back from an exhausting weekend. Today is the day of the fair. I'm not sure if I'm sold on either choice yet, but I don't really have time to mull it over anymore. I went over it again and again. I'm hoping seeing them at the fair today will finalize that. Ah, oh, not big into cherry as a flavor reminds you of medicine. Oh, yeah, I guess that depends on the cherry. Like when I'm thinking about cherry pies, I'm always thinking about like freshly baked cherry pies and specifically like tinned cherries in syrup like my nan used to make the nicest cherry pies she doesn't really bake anymore but my nan's homemade cherry pies just absolutely i could eat an entire giant pie in one go if i was left alone with it they're, they're so good but then like if you just buy it from the store it's it's not it's not as nice yeah, I'm specifically like, okay, when I, when I talk about pies, I really like my nan's homemade cherry pie. And then occasionally I don't mind apple pies, and then that's it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really a pie person either, to be honest. Not really. I'd, I'd, I'd always, like, there's always other pastry things I would prefer. I think, like, a, a pie is never my first choice. But I do like pastries. Yeah, uh, I I don't like pumpkin pie. I I don't like the taste of pumpkin. That's like it's like the one white girl stereotype that I don't fit. I don't like pumpkin spice because I don't like the flavor of pumpkin. <laughs> Not a pumpkin fan. I I don't know what it is. I just don't like the the flavor of it. But yeah, I just don't tend to eat pies. I have different desserts instead. I do like cakes. I really like cakes. <laughs> I'm a big cake fan. Oh, crumbles are nice as well. That's true. Very nice. Good apple crumble. Yeah, oh, cheesecake. I, do, I am partial to a, a nice slice of cheesecake from time to time as well. But if, if it's like, if I had to choose a dessert, if there's like, if there is chocolate fudge cake on the menu, that is always an instant I'm getting that one. Like, that's that's my dessert of choice. If I look at a dessert menu, I see they have chocolate fudge cake. I That that has made my decision for me. But if there isn't, it, it always, like, depends on my mood otherwise. What I want. Oh, you don't like sweets. Well, that's fair. Like, if you don't like sweets, then you, you don't have to eat them. <laughs> but yeah, I, I really like chocolate fudge cake. My absolute favorite. If I had to pick anything. But I, I do like a lot of sweet things. Honestly makes it funnier that I'm not the biggest pie fan, considering how many, like, sweet pies there are. Yeah, interesting to think about. Anyway, here we go. Not sure if I'm sold on either choice yet, but I don't really have time to mull it over anymore. I went over it again and again. I'm hoping seeing them at the fair today will finalize that. With the morning study over, the cafe beckons for a quick pick-me-up before going to war in the club fair's gymnasium venue. Never having been to this kind of event before, I expect chaos. Especially so given the circumstances. Yay, the cafe! We're back at the cafe. I'm so glad. Ah, uh, 
You like cheesecake before going vegan, and you can bake some mean donuts. Nice. I do love donuts. I love donuts. Especially with uh, raspberry jam in the middle. Raspberry jam donuts. They're, yes. That's that's my dessert. My my donut dessert of choice. <laughs> can, you, can you bake some polite donuts? Oh, they'll be polite until you bite into them. Uh, heading in, the place is thankfully quiet, with a scant few students quietly sipping lattes while tapping on laptops or hunched over books. It wouldn't feel unusual any other day, but right now it feels like the calm before the storm. A particular lanky girl catches my eye, as much for her bright getup and headphones as anything else. Hi, Haley. Hello. Haley sits quietly as she listens to her music, hand in chin with a small coffee beside her. For someone so mild-mannered, she sure stands out. Jam donuts? Yes, they're, they're, I love jam donuts. But uh, only if it's... I only really like raspberry jam donuts, though. I feel like the raspberry flavor is the my ultimate favorite donut. But I know a, a lot of people tend to prefer, like, iced donuts or, like, glazed donuts. I'd much prefer just, like, a simple, simply cooked jam donut. With, like, a little sprinkling of powdered sugar on the top. That's, that's all I want. <laughs> or, like, the tiny little donuts. When you get, like, the really small donuts. And you can get, like, dipping chocolate and dip them in the chocolate. I love that. They're, that's a thing that's really common over here in the UK. Like at like markets and like seasonal events and stuff they'll usually be like a little donut stand and they do like freshly baked mini donuts and give you like a chocolate dip a warm chocolate dip to dip them in and i love that so much they are so nice they're so nice i really really like that yeah <laughs> Haley catches my eye yeah and everyone else's ah Haley sits quietly she listens to her music hand in chin with a small coffee beside her for someone so mild-mannered, she sure stands out. She picks her head up and waves me over. Pulling up a seat, she writes herself a bit and takes a sip. Her grimace shows that it's either cold or bad. Probably only bought it to avoid being kicked out for hanging around without ordering. Hey. Hi. Done with fair prep? Yep. I helped them finish setting their tables up this morning, so I've got the rest of the day off till the car ride home. And you don't want to go into the fair? Oh, okay, I'm, I'm sure it's nice in there. It's bound to be an awkward time after the fair today. What are you talking about? Maybe it'll be fine. Maybe nothing rivalish will happen. Maybe it'll just be a lovely fair with nothing to worry about. I can dream, right? Haley can only give a weak shrug in response. Caprice doesn't ride with us much nowadays. Dinner the other day was just an exception to the rule. Oh. Huh. I wonder how I should read that. The meeting was definitely a bit tense, but I didn't think it'd be to the point where they'd be avoiding each other to that degree. Oh, I think this goes a little further than I originally thought. If Caprice is like distancing herself or if Millie is distancing herself could be either of them because Millie is the one who drives so <laughs> hmm are things okay like between them I mean of course they're not <laughs> Her face remains as deadpan as ever, but I can faintly make out a raise in her eyebrows. I guess a question like that out of nowhere probably deserves a reaction like that. They've just been having some personal stuff going on for a while, and things are... Uh, volatile. Nothing you need to worry about. Mm. Probably. 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 Would it make you feel any better if I said... Definitely. Fair enough. Pinch the bridge of my nose in frustration. An act that apparently does not go unnoticed by her. This stressing you out that much? 
it is a little stressful. Also, I, I love the music in this so much. You don't know the half of it. The situation on my end is pretty dire. You'll be fine. Promise. I mean it this time. <laughs> How do you figure? If you're just worried about your grades or whatever, they'll both make sure you get to where you need to be. They've never let me down anyway. Well, that's really, that, that's like genuinely a, a really reassuring thing to hear. <laughs> like, whichever one you pick, you'll be okay. It's okay, don't worry about it. Another sip of her coffee, supposedly forgetting about the reaction she just had to it. I do that too, though. I just absentmindedly pick up my drink every now and then. As expected, her face contorts immediately in response. Even if that's true... Being stuck in the middle of those two like this just makes the entire thing feel more overwhelming than it probably needs to be, you know? Yeah. Yeah, well, join the club. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, I've been stressing about just dealing with them this morning. I can't imagine actually sharing a living space with those two. I want to feel pity for Haley, but the small smile on her face makes me second guess that decision. Get it? She was making the same pun I did. I'm so glad. I love Haley. I love Haley. Fist bump. Yes, I've, I'm so happy. Yeah, I got it. Content that her joke landed, she pulls her headphones back over her ears, our conversation at its end. Get your drink and get out there. Don't let me keep you. Good luck. <laughs> Probably gonna need it. Alright. Nice talking to you. Oh, and thank you for the hydrate nugs. I will have a sip of my drink. Ah, monster. Monster me up. Yep. Oh, I'm so glad we, we managed to have that conversation. By the time I arrive, the club fair is in full swing. What must be hundreds of freshmen, with a scattering of second years here and there, fill the hall and mill about. Wait, what does that say? Does that say cubbing? I don't... It can't. What, what? Hmm. hmm. I can't read anyway, it's fine. It's interesting to see which ones look like they're on a mission as they head directly for a particular club, compared to others who peruse the tables as if browsing a farmer's market. Wait, is there a way to, like, hide the text box? Not sure if there's a way to, like, hide the UI or anything. I can hide the little menu, but I like having that here. Oh, H. Oh, it is clubbing. <laughs> Try po poetry. Nice. Nice. Thank you. When in doubt, press H. H for hide, it makes sense. Boom. Okay, that's handy, thank you. <laughs> yeah, but it's interesting to see which ones look like they're on a mission as they head directly for a particular club, compared to others who peruse the tables as if browsing a farmer's market. Oh, it just zoomed in on them, I'm so silly. It's fine. I could have just waited a single screen. I'm really good at this. <laughs> I'm really good at timing. Dozens of small stalls are lined up, with varying amounts of work put into them. Piles of flyers sit on each, the occasional, uh, the odd standee or prop set up to try to catch the gaze of passing students. Most of those behind club tables look more bored than anything, some having checked out completely as they lean back and browse on their phones. The occasional happy shout rings out as old friends recognize each other, but for the most part, it's a surprisingly subdued affair. 
A nice surprise that calms the nerves a little, but not quite enough to really feel comfortable. Strolling along the aisles, I casually note the more niche club entries, such as robotics, fighting games, and fencing. I could probably be persuaded to join a couple of them under different circumstances. Nearing the end of one particular aisle, it isn't hard to spot, or should I say hear, the art club's table. Looking for fun? Come to the art club! We're accepting anybody, no artsy experience required! Sounds about right. Millie sits beside her, her hands together on the table as she patiently tries to catch the eyes of those passing by. Look at that, we got blueberry and cherry right here. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm imagining Olive signing up for like a fencing class now. They'd just be like, how hard can it be, right? Just really awkwardly standing there with a, a fencing sword. <laughs> Ew, fighting games. Yeah, I wonder what that's like as a club. It's quite cool that that got like accepted as a club. Just like, yeah, this is a, a club about fighting games. I'm really bad at fighting games. <laughs> Millie sits beside her, hands together on the table as she patiently tries to catch the eyes of those passing by. The formal act strikes me as a little put on, not helped by her occasional slips when Caprice gets louder than usual. How these two could live together has me beat. Yet here they are with their two small, uh, two small tables stuffed into one assigned space together. I feel like I'll never fully understand the relationship these two have. They have a special relationship, don't worry about it. And then, it happens. Hi. Caprice and Millie both set eyes on their prey at the same time. Far from a fight breaking out, an intensely awkward silence reigns between the three of us as they carefully maintain their smiling facades, the occasional student passing by only exacerbating the standoff. Sighing at the cruel fate assigned to me, I realize I'll have to take the initiative. Oh god, uh... <laughs> Alright, so we all know what's happening here. Let me hear it. If I may, the writing club's a great working environment, and you could get a lot more done in a peaceful workplace than a party. Is she saying, is she saying that the, the art club's a party? And being a real club, we have ah. actual resources and didn't have to rely on sneaking into the club fair to even be here. Ha. Ah. I mean, you kind of let her sneak in. You're saying that, but you, you, you let her. Even if she's too eager to bite, Millie isn't really wrong as she sneaks a smug look to her right. Shows how much you know. I actually did the paperwork. And yet here you are, sharing my allocated space. I don't need to explain anything. Olive's seen how great we are already. Yeah, great. That's the word for it, definitely. <laughs> Making the roommates joke is killing you. I I will always make the roommates joke. And they were roommates. Oh my god, they were roommates. I think I'm onto something, actually. I think they just need to kiss. And then it'll be fine. Uh, kiss and make up. Anyway, Caprice on her own definitely has an overwhelming personality but her club seems mellow enough. That, combined with the fact the art class is likely to be easier overall, is tempting. The writing club, on the other hand. Well, Millie herself seems really into the subject matter, at least. Even if the rest of the club isn't much of a factor, it'd be hard to find a better tutor. <gasps> Thank you for the Hydra imposter check. Let me have a large stretch. And sit up straight. And a sip of my monster. Thank you, thank you. Ugh. 
I'm doing really good at not slouching today, to be honest. I'm, I'm actually keeping my posture quite well. Although I have gotten to the point now with my monster can where I'm, I'm putting it on my, my desk to my right. So if you ever see me like leaning weirdly in this direction, it's because I've had to put my monster can a little bit away from me because it's getting emptier now to the point where it, the, like the empty can sound kind of echoes a little bit in my room and it's annoying me. So I, I just moved it. <laughs> Right, I think it's almost decision time. So, have you made your decision? Oh, that's a really intense look. That's a really, really intense look. Okay, uh... Let's hear it! Uh... Whichever club I pick, I'll have to drop both the other club and the other class. There's not much chance I could do both and pull out a pass. Oh, here it is. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Let me let me save. Let me save. I'm going to just be going back and doing it anyway, so I don't know why I'm saving here, but I got to save. I got to save. But yeah, we know which way we're going first. And honestly, considering it's basically just her, I feel really bad for Millie. And I also want to know what Heather's deal is. I want to know what what the heck is her problem? Like, I want I want to, like, interrogate her and be like, what is your deal? <laughs> I love how the expressions change, yeah. She's so happy and she's so sad. She's so happy, she's so sad. I love the... <laughs> look at them, look at them. Look at them, it's so great. I love this. I love this, but yes, it's Millie time first. We are joining the writing club. Sorry, Caprice, but I think the best shot I've got is with Millie. <laughs> Millie sweep! <laughs> the collapse of Caprice's face stings a little, though at least Millie has the grace to give her a moment to deal with it. Look, see, my reasoning here at least for like this first option is Caprice's club already has members. Millie's club, I don't think Heather could really count as a member, so I'm just evening out the numbers. That's all I'm doing here. I'm just evening out the numbers. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> ah. She bounces back in true Caprice fashion, settling for pouting as she sits back down in her chair. Millie takes the response as her cue. Thank you, Olive. Pleased to have you aboard. How bad could it be? I joined the writing club, or what little is left of it. She catches herself and reels her excitement back in, though not quite quick enough for it to go unnoticed. Even if she was successful in writing her tone, the large smile on her face is still as obvious a tell as any. Honestly, it's worth it for that smile. It's already immediately worth it for that smile. Caprice will get over it. She'll bounce back. She she is resilient. She is strong and resilient, and she also has Allison and Eileen and Wallace. So this feels good. Your first club meeting will be on Thursday evening, then. I'm sure you know the place. Have fun being bored with boring people. <laughs> If you want to switch, the door is always open. Thanks, Caprice. I won't. I'll keep that in mind. At least not on this playthrough. <laughs> That's the nicest no I can muster. I have to make sure I can pass, and the writing club is the best chance of that. Saying my goodbyes, we agree to meet later before I take my leave and head out from the gym. The writing club. If nothing else, at least there's some comfort in knowing what I'm in for. The next few months are going to be a trial, but Millie definitely seems the better tutor for dragging me past the exams. Only one way forward now, I guess. I'm still struggling with the idea of putting all my trust into a single person, but it's the best option I have. Look, I think... Oh, what was his name again? Darren? 
I've forgotten his name. I'm so bad with names. The guy we met outside the door, I think he's going to be a surprisingly good help as well. I've got a feeling. I've got a... I, my intuition is telling me that he's going to be a decent writer. <laughs> Even if her smile was just a result of her winning her little war with Caprice, something about it manages to reassure me, at least a little. Yeah, Darren. Oh, I'm glad I remembered. I'm glad. I'm glad I got it right. I just had a moment of like, oh my goodness, I remembered his name began with a D. I... <laughs> The Black Waltz the Third, hello. Welcome, welcome. Whoa. I guess I'm part of the creative writing club now. And I finished the prologue! Oh my goodness, and I did it in one stream. I didn't get distracted for three hours. I'm so proud. Monumentous occasion. But now it's time to start the Millie path, I guess. Millie story. Here we go. It takes a moment for my eyes to adjust as I step out into the dazzling sun. It's a Thursday evening, and that means everyone with a life is leaving the grounds as fast as their legs can can take them. My my brain wanted to like fill in little legs there. Just wanted to say that they're running as fast as their little legs can take them. Like. Everyone else, myself included, is walking right back into the campus. I pick up my pace as I walk. It'd look bad if I was late to the club I just joined. Reaching the arts building, I wait for the flow of students escaping the day's classes to taper off, squeezing uh, before squeezing inside and leaving the beauty of fall behind. Looks like a full house today, as sad as the idea is. The only sound to be heard is the squeak of a marker on the whiteboard. Oh no, that means Heather's here. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Millie shoots me a polite smile as she notices me enter, before busying herself further with her very important work. Tanya rocks her chair while looking out the window, Heather apathetically plays with her phone, and Darren dutifully writes in his notebook. Taking off my backpack and swinging it beside me, I take a seat in the front row with the others, the only open seat being next to... Heather, can't imagine why. S so, um... Good, good club we got here. Um, weather's getting colder. E yeah. Okay. As the seconds roll by and at a loss for what exactly I'm supposed to do, I busy myself with looking around the mostly empty room. The really almost totally empty room. The desks are organized into a perfect grid. Spare pencils fill the pen holders on the benches around the room. The teacher's desk, commandeered by Millie, is neatly organized with notebooks and folders. Everything is perfectly set up for the class ahead. Standing alone at the front of the room, Millie looks more like an actor playing a part in an empty theater than a club leader. She's taking her time comparing the notes in her well-worn journal to what she's writing on the board, but she's coming across as more nervous than diligent. I already feel bad for her. In my wandering thoughts, I lock eyes with Heather for a moment. I offer a polite smile, being that we're in the same club, for better or worse, it's worth at least trying to get along with her. Rather than return the awkward greeting, she simply rolls her eyes and goes back to her phone. Yeah, that's about what I expected. Wow, the art club was that bad, huh? <laughs> Caprice must have left a pretty horrible impression for you to end up here. Wow! She doesn't look up from her cell as she talks, scrolling through her social feed way too fast to actually be reading anything on it. What? No, it's not that. This just seemed like a more legitimate club. At the time. At the time. 
Heather scoffs at that, half smiling in a way that mocks more than words possibly could. What is it we're actually meant to do? Beyond writing, that is. Show up every Tuesday and Thursday. So long as we have an extra warm body in the room, the club doesn't get killed off. Wow. The snap of Millie's notebook closing takes my attention, our teacher turning back to the classroom. Heather pointedly turns slightly away from me, ending the conversation. Welcome to another meeting, members new and old. Hi! I'll get right into it, since I know everyone's busy. Everyone will do some writing today on a topic they'll choose. You can finish your stories off after the meeting if you don't find the time today. Okay, do, do, you, do you have suggestions, please? At the next meeting, we'll share our work with each other. That'll help us all gauge where we're at in our writing skills and what we'd like to focus on going forward. Oh. Unlike the dead silence from earlier, Millie's trying to project her voice in a loud and clear way, even if it's only to the four of us. Whatever issues the club may be having, I'm reminded of why I thought it was the better choice. She's earnest, and at the very least gives off the air of a good teacher. Question, Miss Clark? How long does the story have to be? Only as long as you want. This isn't classwork. Lucky us. Shut up. Heather, God, shut up. Unlike Tanya's somewhat rehearsed sounding participation, Heather isn't even hiding that she intends to do nothing. Darren looks like he's copying down the notes on the whiteboard, so that leaves only me left as Millie turns towards my direction. If you need any help, don't hesitate to ask. I don't know where to even start, to be honest. I haven't read a book on my own time since fifth grade. Whoa. I'm better at more logical subjects. The arts aren't really my thing. The world isn't so neat that everything can be divided up into logical or creative sorts. A blank page is always a writer's worst enemy. But this is a writing club, <laughs> not a workshop. We can work through it together. I love her. I love her so much already. Millie has the vibe of a streamer who's doing their best despite having zero viewers. Oh, Oh, it seems so sad working, wording it like that, but it, it kind of is, yeah. It's just like, uh, speak to the audience you want, not the one you have. I, I'm, I believe in her. It's okay, your club will grow. I, she has the passion. She has the enthusiasm. I love her. She's just, she's so, like, earnestly passionate. She closes her eyes, giving serious thought as how to best make do with my less than useful outlook. <gasps> Forward the head back to Millie, please. Okay, give me a sec. Give me a sec. Hold on. I can do this. There we go. Good. Good. There it is. Thank you for the Millie head fat. Thank you. <laughs> Very important. Thank you. You relate to this experience of running a club like this viscerally. Oh my goodness. Waffle off. Hello. Oh, relatability. Ah. Oh. Welcome, welcome. I, I hope it doesn't feel too painful. But, uh, Rika, thank you for the, the Millie head pat. If anyone ever wants to head pat one of the characters on screen, um, just do a head pat redeem. Let me know who you want and I'll do another head pat that's for them. <laughs> To my surprise, it doesn't take long before her eyes reopen, a newfound sparkle in them. Tell me, where do you think a story should start? At the beginning? That's a very good place to start. When you read, you begin with A, B, C. When you sing, you begin with Do, Re, Mi. Sorry, I need to stop. Uh, <laughs> the beginning? Wrong. A story starts with a plan. A story without a plan is just a meandering series of sentences. That's really good advice. That is very good advice. I wasn't prepared for this passion. 
glancing sideways to see if this is considered normal, my neighbor sits there unfazed, apathetically scrolling her phone. That answers that then. So, let's start at the real beginning. The highest layer of writing a story. An idea. Someone give me a one sentence idea for a story. No details at all, just the elevator pitch. A knight saves a princess from a castle. From the little I've learned about Tanya so far, that feels like a very Tanya answer. See, the problem for me was she said just the elevator pitch and my brain immediately just went to, uh, you get in an elevator with someone and then the elevator breaks down. That would be my, my pitch. It's, it's a terrible pitch. It's the worst pitch. <laughs> just turn it into a horror story. Just being trapped in an elevator with somebody. I much prefer the knight saving a princess from a castle. Tanya jumps up, suddenly looking way more excited. She smiles as Millie claps her hands together and writes it on the board. Yeah, you get the basic idea and then you start thinking, okay, so why is the princess in the tower? Why does the knight know they're there? What does the knight have to do to save her? That's the plan. <laughs> I appreciate her input. The atmosphere of the room changes ever so slightly in the spirit of collaboration. Excellent. That's a high-level story concept. Ideas are quick and easy to come up with, but finding one you're excited about is the most important part. Oh, so true. Now, down to the next layer. What three things should any story have? Uh... Something conflict resolution, I think. Maybe. I, I, I don't remember anything from English classes. It's been a very long time since I was at school. I'm, I'm, an, I'm an ancient being from a different realm. She pauses and looks back to all of us. Tanya sits back down and looks around to the rest of us for help. I think, I think it is like, part of it's like conflict and then resolution, maybe. I don't know what the third would be though. Seeing me look entirely lost and Darren avoiding her eye contact, Tanya gives Heather's desk a small kick. Well, a regular kick. <laughs> Heather responds with an annoyed tss and glances at and glares at the ceiling as she responds. Considering everything about Heather, that was a pretty tame response. I wonder how often something like this happens. Introduction, <gasps> conflict, resolution. I remembered. Oh my god, oh, I'm a I'm a I'm a creative writing genius. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, for anyone who's curious, the only subject in school that I got a good graded result for was English language. <laughs> Everything else, like, I had a lot of trouble in school because I, I lost a lot of time in school due to illness, so a lot of the stuff I was doing I had to cut back on a lot of classes. So I didn't get many grades just because I ran out of time because of, like, absences and illness so I was doing everything as like a very reduced rate kind of thing but I did really well in English English was always like my top subject just because I really like grammar I'm a, I'm a, I'm a little nerd I'm just here like I really love semicolons <laughs> I really like grammar but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm actually proud of myself for remembering that I remembered like conflict and resolution but introduction is a very... That makes a lot of sense. I don't know why I forgot that. <laughs> Thank you, Heather. <laughs> now, Tanya's story about the knight and the princess needs an introduction, a conflict, and a resolution. Darren, could you fill that out for us? Uh, I guess it'd be... The knight and the princess's situation is set up for the introduction. Ha <laughs> ha. The conflict is the idea itself. The knight has to save the princess. Then, I guess the resolution is for the princess and knight to get married and live happily ever after? Yeah! Almost there, but the conflict needs to be an obstacle to reaching the conclusion. Why does the princess need saving? What's in the way of the two being together? Oh, yeah, that's... It's gonna be like the reason of like why is the princess in the tower in the first place? Why does the princess need rescuing? 
And Mogo, hello! Welcome, welcome! He fell asleep! It's okay, you're here now. Welcome, welcome! Welcome in! I've I've started the game, I've done the prologue, and we're starting with the writing club. We're starting with Millie. I, I put a poll up in chat to see which direction I should head in first, and it was a perfect tie, so I had to leave it down to a dice roll. I had to roll a die and make the decision that way because I, I can't make decisions. I'm I'm a little baby, I can't make them. <laughs> but we're starting with the Millie path. But welcome, welcome, I hope you're doing well. Usually it'd be something like a dragon has her locked up. Dragon! Good, but now this story feels a little too formulaic. Yeah, let's shake it up a bit. What if, instead of a dragon, the tower is cursed, and the curse can only be lifted by destroying a sacred stone that is cursing the tower, and so the knight has to find the stone and destroy it to save the princess. Okay, that's my story. <laughs> yeah. How about for the assignment this week, you all write the story of the princess and the yes. knight with your very own twist? Something to make the story uniquely yours. I wrote mine. I wrote my twist. And then also the twist is that you you think the knight's a guy the whole time, and then the knight takes off their helmet, and it's actually another beautiful woman, and they they both go off into the sunset and get gay married. That's that's my story. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining me on Liri's Creative Writing. <laughs> There's one last layer before we start writing in earnest. We have our outline, but now we need to attack the structure. How do you approach a big project? That is actually a visual novel. Oh yeah, I know that. I know that's like a plot for several things. I'm pretty sure there's a book as well that's like that exact concept. But they don't have a cursed tower that is being um, cursed by a, a sacred stone that has to be destroyed. That's all me. That's all me. Also, the stone is sentient and insults you when you try and get close to it. That's my story. <laughs> yeah. <gasps> Hello! <laughs> Yuri Shrek. That is, a, that is like the most beautiful first message you could have posted in chat. Thank you for being here. It's, wait, it, it kind of is. That would be really good actually. That. Imagine Shrek, but Shrek is a woman. <laughs> just any concept of anything ever, just be like, okay, imagine this thing, but what if, what if women? Yeah. Oh yeah, you did, you did post the confetti earlier. You did. I do remember seeing that. You did, you did post the confetti. I, I, I forgot about that too. <laughs> But honestly, I'm I'm glad that that's gonna be like the first, first writing in the the log. <laughs> but thank you for being here. I that I just I'm, I'm on board for Yuri Shrek now. I'm here for it. If Shrek is a woman, so Fiona no, but, so to, no, uh, to marry Fiona, another woman. Uh, and then the curse cannot be undone by any man, and the knight is like, I'm no man. <laughs> Wait, that'd be so good. Oh, actually, I've had a, I've had more of an idea for my story too. Uh, the, the stone that is causing the curse on the tower. What if it's actually embedded in the side of the tower? What if it's like one of the stones that is, like, that the tower is built with? And it's just a moment of, hold on, this stone is different. And then the stone starts insulting you like, yeah, I'm different. I'm I'm the one keeping this old tower together. And, and I, I don't know why I'm suddenly imagining this the stone with like a New York accent now. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know, what, what is the story becoming? What am I doing? Where is my brain going? I should stop. I really should stop. I'm so curious what Olive's take on this would be though. 
Ah, structure. We need to take our story outline and break it up further into chapters. If you like TV shows, think of them as episodes, or maybe as different scenes from a play. Haha. -ha. How about three chapters, or just paragraphs for a short story, between each of the introduction, conflict, and resolution? Yeah. You can change that as you go if things don't feel right, but that gives us a framework to hang our story on. Millie is so good at explaining this. Like, I'm listening to this now, and a little part of me is kind of like, what if after the stream, I literally just go and write my own short story about the Cursed Tower brick? <laughs> I genuinely kind of want to now. Millie's inspiring me to write. Yeah, Millie is so good at making assignments that she made all of us start doing it immediately. <laughs> right, she, she does it so well, though. She makes you want to, like, participate. There. Does that look like something you can write? I love this. I can kind of see it in my head now. Yeah. This whole process doesn't feel very creative, though. I mean, carefully dissecting a story into layers and components feels a bit clinical and that's exactly what millie meant when it's when it's when she said to not just consider logical and creative as like opposites there's a lot of structure involved in a lot of creativity and also there there can be logical things that also require creative thinking like puzzles and stuff like they're not so different hee <laughs> A sparkle shines in her eye. I've stumbled into something she wanted me to work out for myself. So clinical that you might say it's almost logical? Yeah. <laughs> Tanya gives an amused snort from the other side of the class. And even Darren smiles a little at that. She got me. She was leading me to that this entire time. Millie leans back on the desk be uh, behind her and lets me stew for a moment. <laughs> There's no clear line between creativity and logic. You need both to write, or make any sort of art. To paint a person, I imagine you need to understand anatomy. To write a story, you need to understand structure and how readers will think. Don't get hooked up on being as imaginative and original as you can. Just practice. Write badly. I can do that. I can do that. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna write badly for Millie. I'm going to. I'm determined now. I, I, genu I genuinely want to write a really bad story about a cursed tower with a rock that insults you in a New York accent. <laughs> why, why am I like this? Where did this come from? Why did I... Where, I don't know how I ended up there, but I'm, I'm so glad I did. After a while, you'll come to intuitively understand why some things work and others don't. Like a driver slowly ah. learns to work a car without thinking about how they're doing it. Muscle memory. And when you're stuck, you can always Experience. talk it out. Giving each other feedback is the most important, and fun, part of writing. Honestly, this line, this line right here, I think this is the reason why I didn't really get into writing very much. I actually used to do loads of writing. Sorry, I'm going to go off on a tangent a tiny bit now. Uh, when I was, like, in my, like, mid to late teens, I used to do a lot of roleplay online. Like, text-based roleplay on a forum. Like the old, uh, pro boards in Vision Free, whatever it's called. I used to do loads of forum roleplaying. And I would write, like, entire essays at a time. I was so invested in the roleplay. But I only really did that because... I had someone to like bounce off, like someone would do a reply to the post and then I would reply to that in response and that like back and forth was how I would get the writing done. But then like life happened, things happened, all of the boards kind of like fell apart. People started like getting older and having to do like adult things like go to work instead of play around on a forum. And it all kind of just, like, stopped from there. And that's when I, like, stopped writing as well, honestly. I I feel like I'm no good at doing stuff on my own, but if I'm, like, working collaboratively with someone, I have so... I can go and... I can have so many weird ideas. I, 
my brain goes off in so many directions. Like, someone can mention something to me, and I can come up with, like, five different ideas for directions it could go in. But if I'm left to my own devices to think of that first idea, I, I kind of just flounder and don't think of anything. But I, I really miss, like, the creative side of that. I really miss, like, inventing and the creation like that. I really loved, I loved the forum roleplay board so much. I, oh, I like, what, what even was it? I was a member of so many. There was one that was like, what even, what even was it now? I made so many characters. I have, <laughs> I have so many memories of like one of my characters. I was like, uh, my, my face claim is Haley Williams from Paramore. And I would I would have like my little icon and signature with like art I made of Haley Williams from Paramore. <laughs> oh, and I, I had so much fun with that. I, I really loved like the character creation and the development like that. But it's the kind of thing I don't think I can do on my own. Oh, I think that's why I love tabletop roleplay so much as well. Like I am such a huge fan of TTRPGs. Like I've 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 been part of so many campaigns with my friends, and I really love that because it's back to that collaborative storytelling. Like I I would never be able to DM because that's like the part I need. I need the DM to throw an idea at me, and then I go and run with it. <laughs> but I I really love I love tabletop roleplay stuff. I love roleplaying. I've got a. A group of really close friends who I've known for really long now, and we do a lot of a lot of campaigns, a lot of roleplay campaigns, and I've created so many characters with them. And I just really love how like even talking to the DM, sometimes he'll be like, I didn't expect the story to go in this direction, but that's what's ended up happening, so things are changing now. <laughs> and I really love how it can like grow like that. It's the kind of stuff that wouldn't happen if you're writing a story on your own like I'll be there with this character and I'll just be like okay this character's gonna do this now you may not have thought they would but they are going to and that's gonna change things and I really really love that it's so fun I I want to I want to write again I want to I want to be creative I would love to get back to that but I I don't think I have time to write recently I'm I don't have time for anything <laughs> But I really miss it. I miss it a lot. I just... Honestly, more than writing, I, I wish I had more people I could just talk to about creative things. And, like, if someone has an idea for something, like, to help them expand on their ideas, I really love, like, being the one to give input. I like to be the, the person to bounce ideas off and then bounce them back at a slightly skewed direction. Like, okay, that's a really good idea. What if you did it this way? Because that's, that's what I'm best at. I'm I'm no good at the original ideas. I'm good at thinking of like, okay, that's really good, but what if you also did this? Like, those kind of ideas. Also, thank you for the dictionary narration as well, Akira. Let me grab my dictionary. The... Grab my dictionary I put on the floor. And what do we have? We have the letter D. Let's see what we got. Boom. You're kidding me. I can't even joke about this. <laughs> hey, do you want to know what word we got for D? We got divert. <laughs> divert. A verb. One, to change the direction or course of. Two, to distract someone or their attention. Or three, to amuse or entertain. Diverting into the Leary tangent. I love it. That's That's like the weirdest like weirdly fitting word i love that also i love how all three of the meanings kind of work here too it's like we, i changed the direction of what was happening by having a little talk about ttrpgs uh dist i'm distracting people for their attention and i'm hopefully amusing or entertaining i try to be <laughs> i try to entertain hopefully i'm decent enough at it but yeah, I just really wanted to mention that just because I, I really, when I think back, I wrote so much. I'm always amazed looking back on it and like how much I would write. But it was always like, 
I could only really do it because I had something to bounce off of. If I'm left to my own devices, I... I think I second-guess myself too much and then I just don't do it instead of trying. But yes, thank you for the head pad too! And oh, you don't usually consider yourself a creative person, Arika, because you don't really have ideas for stuff very often. But when you did brainstorming in theatre club in high school, you were coming up with tons of ideas all the time somehow. I feel like that's how I am! That's how I am! I, I feel like I can come up with so many ideas, but I need, like something to like trigger the ideas happening i can't just make the ideas happen on their own and i'm i'm like i'm usually too tired to to have the ideas come naturally to me i'm just like falling asleep but uh yeah i, I really love like taking an idea and like adapting it or building off something i find that a lot of fun anyway i'm sorry millie i just got really excited about i don't know i don't know why i'm apologizing to be honest i feel like if Millie heard me talking about all of this, she would be delighted. She would be over the moon. I don't think I'd have to apologize. But yes, we will get back to Millie now, though. <laughs> oh, a friend and you used to RP where you aim to reply a thousand words minimum each reply. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I feel like that's about where I was. I would, I'd be writing these replies on a forum message board and they'd be like three paragraphs long. <laughs> like three significant paragraphs long. <laughs> I'm I'm still amazed thinking back on it. It makes me so sad that all of the forums kind of like got lost in the abyss of time because I actually got curious recently. I tried to see if they were on like the Wayback Machine. <laughs> if I could find all my old stuff, but so much of it is just gone. Cuz it was just like these free forums that I would make with people I met on like a random green day fan site not even joking about that I, I met so many people through a green day fan site forum uh, <laughs> but it's so wild to look back on and be like wow I, d I did that I was doing that regularly but yes feedback is the most important and fun part of writing so take some time to plan it out, think of your knight and princess, and ask around if you're stuck. We can all share our stories next Tuesday. I'm excited. I'm excited for this. The room's already awash in the orange of sunset by the time I sit up to take a break. With the meeting winding down, the rest of the members having largely stopped paying attention to their notebooks, I look down at my own. I'm so curious as to what their ideas are going to be, if they have any. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I, when I was younger, probably a l little too young for internet forums, honestly, I met so many of my online friends through a, a Green Day fan forum and also a My Chemical Romance fan forum. I was also a member of one of those. And that's where I met so many people. And ended up like joining the roleplay forums through like a couple of people from there who were like, hey, do you like roleplay? And then like as time went on as well, I ended up like I, I ended up using Live Journal for the longest time. I was part of like a loads of Live Journal communities. D does anyone remember Live Journal? Hi, I'm really aging myself right now. <laughs> I'm really outing my age right now. But I was I, I made loads of like live journal accounts for role playing. And I had so much fun with that. It's <laughs> a so biochemical romance role playing. No, it it was just a forum for like fans of the band to chat. It wasn't actually like a role play forum. It's just that the people I met there like we would chat and they'd be like, Hey, have you ever tried doing like role play before? Check out this forum and then I'd end up somewhere else. You were on Quizilla and Live Journal. Oh my goodness, shakes your hand. I shake your hand. Oh, the memories. <laughs> I probably still have my old Live Journal account somewhere. I know I have one of them. I did a lot of role playing as um uh, Haruhi Suzanir. <laughs> I did I did Haruhi Suzanir role play, but it was like less the paragraph role play, more like silly comment replies not taking it seriously roleplay but uh, I had a lot of fun with the the live journal times 
<laughs> oh, between RP used to read fanfiction from fanfiction.net. Oh my goodness, yes. I was I was never really like much of a fanfic reader or writer. But I, I knew a lot of people who were. Oh, you picked Neopets chat boards! Oh, I used I used to go on Neopets so much. I used to love Neopets. Uh, I, my first account on Neopets got frozen. And it got frozen on New Year's Eve one year because I said LMAO on the Neo boards. And because of that, I technically said ass and they froze my account. This was like a really, really long time ago now. And I was so devastated by it. But uh, I have another account. <laughs> That I made like a few years after that when I'd dealt with the emotional grief. It might have actually been LMFAO, actually thinking about it. I may have put the F in there. Which was like, like back at the time, this that was like a huge thing. Like breaking the rules. Big no-no. Very big no-no. <laughs> but uh, I actually started playing Neopets again at the start of this year. And it's it's actually been really fun playing it every day. I'm so sorry. I said I was going to stop getting distracted and that that never happens because I am me. <laughs> but yeah, I I never really like used the Neo boards that much though. I think I got traumatized by getting frozen and I just didn't post on the Neo boards again. <laughs> but yeah, for me it was definitely it was it was the forum role place to begin with. And then I think one of the free forum providers said they were going to close down because they couldn't like keep servers up when everyone was making free forums all the time. And that's when I moved to LiveJournal. And then LiveJournal was less paragraphs, more just like a single sentence. And then from there, like the LiveJournal, like LiveJournal just fell apart. That That broke. That's like, it still technically exists, but nobody uses it anymore. And after that, I didn't really do it again. I didn't do it again for years and years and years until I started doing the tabletop roleplay stuff with my besties. And yeah, it's it's come back from that, I guess. Yeah, Leary breaking the rules. Look, I was I was a young child. I was very young. I didn't know any better. I made mistakes. But, oh, you're going to go have food. Oh, I hope you have lovely dinner. Thank you for stopping in. And I will also have a great evening. I think I'm going to be writing this evening. I got a feeling. <laughs> anyway, back to this. Here we go. What have you got, Olive? A truly awful mess of words looks back up at me. Stuff like this makes me question the entire premise of writing. How can I mess up so badly at doing the very thing I did back in high school English? With that said, I can't deny that breaking down the story, as Millie said, has already helped a lot with the entire process. I think back to the literature textbook sitting somewhere in my apartment. The language was more difficult, but the whole point of the class has been about finding author intent and how it's successful. I'm still not confident in being able to identify what makes a good story, but having the vocabulary to start thinking about its components is a relief. As much as this seems like basic stuff, I can't help but be a bit annoyed at myself again for checking out all during my high school English classes. <laughs> Larry has joined the writing club. I have. I have. I'm... I can't believe it. Like, Millie sold me in the, the very first one. Like, the very first very first time I meet Millie, she's instantly just, like, sold me to the club. I'm a member now. I'm just a member of the club now. It it cannot be helped. Because, see, like, I really like art as well. I wish I was better at art. But I, I don't think I really have, like, the passion to want to get invested in art, if that makes sense. But, like, writing... Writing is, like... I don't know, it's really hard because I feel like it's less writing for me. It's more storytelling and story building that I really like. And the writing just kind of like comes with that. It's like a like a package deal. But I, I really like like story development and thinking of ideas and growing ideas. 
My saving grace right now is Millie, who seems more than happy to use club time as a teacher rather than a fellow club member. The ruffling of papers as people pack up makes it clear everyone else is either done for the day or giving up. Following their lead, I slip the pens and paper into my bag. With Darren still fussing about, Heather preoccupied with her phone, and Tanya chatting with Millie while sitting on the teacher's desk, it looks like I'm the first out as I give our leader a quick wave while passing. Ah, uh, oh, you like reading more. While you do draw, sometimes words make more sense to you. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. I, I, I used to read loads. When I was younger, I was like a voracious reader. I would just like devour books. I'd read like an entire novel in one day. <laughs> I'm a really fast reader. I, I used to read so many books. But then, um, then I became an adult and I had less free time. And also I had undiagnosed ADHD. And like when I was stressing out about like life and being an adult and stuff, I could never concentrate on reading the same way I could when I was like a child or a, a young mid-teen. And... Like, I'm at the point now where I have ADHD medication and I know if I sat down with a good book, I would be able to focus on it now and actually read it. The problem now is I just don't have free time. Like, what is free time? I sure wish I had some of that. <laughs> but I do miss reading. Although, like, I say that. I'm reading with the visual novels. That's, it's part of why I love the visual novel streams, because I, I get to, I get to enjoy the reading and the stories through this with bonus pictures. And music and everything else attached to it, too. It's great. It's really nice. <laughs> oh, you have to eat. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you rest well. I hope you have a good rest. And thank you for the hydrate before you go. I'll have some more monster. There we go. Haha. -ha. Oh, to you, you could focus on a good book. Sometimes forget the time, though. Oh, me too. Like, a... As soon as I start reading a book and I'm getting absorbed in it, I fully lose track of time. And I think that might also be why I don't read so much as like an adult with adult responsibilities. Because when I was younger, when I was a child, like I wouldn't care about the time. I don't care about the time at all. I don't need to worry about the time. But as I grow older, I am so aware of time and how much time I have that I keep thinking about it and I keep getting distracted by it. Like, oh, I only have an hour. I need to stop after an hour. And that kind of distracts me more. I miss the days when I could just come home from school and just read and just keep reading. <laughs> ah, right, here we go. Oh, before you go. Oh, hi. I stop in my tracks, having so nearly escaped. The sight of Millie's hand happily outstretched, palm up, confuses me. Oh, does she want to see my notes? I think she wants to see the notes. Yes? Phone. No, she wants to exchange contact details. Okay! My eyes narrow at the request. I just wanted to take down your number and put in contacts for the others. Thank you. Even though she doesn't seem like the type to text non-stop or call at random hours of the day, a part of me is dreading giving someone I've only just met my number. It might be helpful to have on hand in case I have an actual writing class question, though. Reluctantly, I pull the phone out of my pocket and hand it to her. Why do you have everyone's numbers anyway? Don't you meet twice a week? It's nice! As she finishes up, Millie gives an alarmingly large grin as she places my phone back into my palm. Ah, but that's not all we do. I'm glad no. you're loving this, VN. It's really sweet. Also, 40 months woo. 40 months woo! Nyokocho, thank you so much for the resub, the 40 months. The founder 40 month sub. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. And yeah, I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it so far. It's so good. I love it so much. I love all of the characters so far. Side eyes, Heather. I love all of the characters so far. <laughs> but thank you so much for the resub. Thank you, thank you. It really is so sweet. It's so good. 
Uh, I just went off on a really, really long tangent, making my own story from Millie's outline. <laughs> I really love this. I'm, I'm already fully. I'm, I'm a member of the writing club now. I've, I've joined. I'm a member. <laughs> I can't wait to do the the art club path and get really emotionally invested in that too. But I'm I'm a part of the writing club now. Millie turns back to the club members, all stopping what they're doing as she proudly puffs her chest out. To welcome in our new members, I'm announcing the first group outing for the reorganized writing club. Oh. Okay. going on an outing oh my, God. oh my goodness act one pen to paper oh. ah. i'm in the writing club right what time is it oh this is probably a good spot to leave it at for now i think i think this is a good spot to save and continue next week because it is uh, 10 to 6 right now. I need to go feed Tiffany at 6. Wait, I can rename the pages. Uh, prologue choices. Millie. Oh, that, that, that face looks kind of weird like this. What if I do? That looks strange. Uh... Uwu. Oh, the Uwu looks cute. Okay, this is Millie Uwu page. <laughs> but I did it. That seems, yeah, that seems like a, a good stopping point to, to continue to next time. Oh, I love that you can rename the pages like that. It makes it so easy to organize. Like if I have all the Millie root saves on here and then like label the Caprice ones afterwards, that's so useful. That is so good. Also, Teffy, hello! Hi, hi, Mui. It's Mui time. We're in the Whiting Club. Oh, whoa. Well. <laughs> that looks really cute, though, actually. This this font with that little uwu, that is, that is like the... That's one of the best uwu faces I've ever seen. That is, that is peak uwu right here. I found peak uwu by accident. I'm very proud. <laughs> But yeah, that seems like a good spot to continue our next time. And now we have an olive on the main menu. Look at that. There they are. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> wait, no, cause don't know why you're searching for old fanfics, but you guess you can't stop now. I am I was going to apologize, but I'm not sorry. I hope you have fun. <laughs> but oh, this is so good so far. This is so good. And oh, thank you for gifting a sub too. Thank you. Thank you for the gift sub. Welcome, you get the emotes now. I, I also love that cactus so much. Also, I love like the whole aesthetic with like the the cardboard and the paper cutouts. And like, I'm, I'm such a sucker for this kind of aesthetic. You can probably tell by my overlay. Like I've, I've taped my axolotl up over here. The chat box is a piece of paper at the top as well. I got my pin board on the other menu. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a big fan of, like, the scrapbook style. It's so good. <laughs> but, oh, this has been... I don't know. I I don't know what to say. Like, I was expecting it to be good. But I'm, I feel like I'm enjoying it more than I expected to as well. Like, I'm just... I'm so, so ready to play more. Like, if I hadn't noticed the time as the Act 1 card came up, I, I could just keep going. But I don't think I should for for reasons of um, I do need to eat dinner. And also, I think my throat would hate me if I was reading for too much longer as well. But this has been, oh, this has been such a joy to start. I'm so excited for next week now. Just... Twofold Tuesdays, they are here. Oh, uh, they please take my Bezos bucks <gasps> before you go. Dog! Dog, thank you so much! Thank you. I will happily take the, the Bezo bucks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the 13 months. The Prime sub is very appreciated. Thank you. Wait, there's a hype train. I can't end now. <laughs> oh, what I can do, though, is I will 
envelope. I'll head over to here and start having a look at who's online to send a raid over to. But yeah, oh, this this game is just such a joy so far. I'm just, I love it. I'm loving it so much. I'm I'm really excited to play more. <laughs> like I've I've been waiting to play this for so long, but I wanted to play first snow first, and then life got in the way. And I thought I would have free time, and I proceeded to not have free time still. So it's it's really exciting to finally have the time now. <laughs> I'm really happy. But yeah, it's I'm, I'm 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 I can't wait for next week already. And I am going to be writing my knight and princess story, <laughs> even if it is bad. I'm I'm maybe I'll like try and write it purposely bad, so I don't feel self-conscious. Like I don't feel like I have to work my hardest to make it good. I'll, I'm just gonna take Millie's advice. I'm just gonna write whatever garbage comes out of my brain. And maybe it'll be fun. I think it will be fun. <laughs> but yeah, this has been so good. This has been so fun. And I'm, I'm just, I'm really glad to finally be played. It is so, so great. But yes, I, I should go and get some dinner and stuff soon. But, uh, oh, what What can I do while the hype train's happening? I know what I want to do as well. Uh, if anyone's seen my, my schedule post and also the, the thumbnail I posted on Twitter, Mogu made the most incredible fan art for me for playing for playing this. Like, and, and for First Snow as well. It's like the such cute fan art. I'm trying to, like, make sure I resize it to an appropriate size before I load it up on the screen. But it's probably still gonna be huge. We will see. I can't save it as image one. There's already an image one. What do I do? And the first snow one. Ba -ba -ba -ba. It, it probably would be easier if I just showed the thumbnails. But alas, I'm silly. Also, thank you for the automaton redeem. <laughs> thank you. Oh, something. My chem my chemical romance. Okay. 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 My chemical romance automaton time. And then I'll load up the art. I, I want to show the art on stream because it is so cute. But let's. Why why did it move me to the corner like that? Hold on. I'm pressing all the wrong buttons. Don't mind me. There we go. I fixed it. I fixed it. You didn't see that. My chemical romance automaton time. Right, let's let's do the song I think of back in the forum days. the song after just hearing three notes i'm so glad i'm so proud how about this one hold on <laughs> when i was a young cat <laughs> sounds just like gerard thank you i try my best it is I, Gerard Way. Let's put that away now. Oh, it took it away from the... Hold on. I messed up everything there. I pressed all the wrong buttons. Teehee. Yeah, honestly, honestly, that one you can get just from the one note. Just the... Done. That's all you need. That's all you need for that. And that bought time perfectly for the hype train as well. Thank you so much for the hype train, everybody. I didn't expect it. Thank you. Thank you so much. But yeah, I, I still love My Chemical Romance. They've got some great songs. I love them. But anyway, please look at this amazing art 
that Mogu did. Boom. Look at that, look at it. It's so good, it's so perfect. I love it so much. It is me, I'm Olive now. It's so great, I love it. And also the first snow art, where did I, s oh goodness, I saved it and I don't know where I saved it now. Oh, it's right here, Never mind. Oh, that one's huge, hold on. I did not resize that one. But look at this too, the, the art for first snow is so cute. I've got my little Tiffany on my lap too, it's, oh, it's so nice. It's so sweet. I. I feel blessed to have such gorgeous fat art. It's so lovely. It's so lovely. Thank you, Mogu. I love it. I love it so much. But I'm, I'm so excited to finally be playing Twofold. It's, it's so great. It's so much fun. I didn't expect to get invested in the writing club this much. I, I feel like joining the writing club has just... It's just fully activated that like old roleplay part of my brain that I'd forgotten about. And now I'm just having so many memories of like the, the roleplay forums and the, the live journals. And oh, I'm just, ah, I love it. I'm, I'm so excited to play more. It's so good. Oh, Mogo made a tweet a long time ago that was like, really liking Twofold, expect fan art eventually. And the payoff was super worth. Yeah, Mogo's art is so pretty. It's so gorgeous. I, I feel honored. I feel like I should be paying for like a commission for these, honestly. I've, I love them. I love them so much. But yeah, I think that's a good spot to leave it at for now. It is 6.01 p.m. I'm probably making Tiffany very mad at me because I'm not feeding her immediately. So I've got to go give her some dinner. But before we do that, let's send a raid. Let's see who's around to raid. Who's online? Bum, bum, bum. I'm just gonna rate Sophie again. I've just, every, every, every stream I've been doing, like the past however many streams, I'm just rating Sophie every time. <laughs> but this time is especially special because Sophie is playing Little Kitty Big City, which I really, really wanna play. But uh, Sophie's doing their donothon at the moment because they're moving house soon. So they're raising funds for that. Wait, how are the goals? Oh, they're like less than $400 away from talking about their OCs and sharing their OCs. And I really hope they hit that goal because I want to know about their OCs. <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to send the raid over to Sylphie as well because they are great. Another member of Verpro with me. They're very cool. Very, very comfy stream to hang out in as well. I, I often have their streams on just to lurk. Also an incredible artist, incredible live 2D rigger very very skilled they're very cool so i'm gonna send the raid over Sylphie's way here is the raid message did i change it i did i did i remembered to change it here's the raid message we got two fold tuesday leary raid and i'm gonna send you over Sylphie's way please send them lots of love from me because i will i will be lurking while i go get dinner and stuff but this has been, this stream has just been such a joy the whole time. This has just been such a, an enjoyable experience. I love this. I love this game. I love it so much. I'm so excited to learn more about like everyone. Like not just the main characters too. I want to know what Heather's deal is. I want to know more about Darren. I want to know more about Tanya. I want to know more about everyone. I want to know what's going on. <laughs> But, oh, it's so fun. I'm so excited. But, yes, that is it from me for now. I'll be back tomorrow. And I'm going to be playing a, a new puzzle game that's actually releasing tomorrow. And it looks like a really, like, pretty experience. And really cool puzzles. So I hope it's good. I'm, I'm hoping it's good. But I'm looking forward to that. So I'll be here tomorrow playing chill puzzles. I think they're chill. Maybe. <laughs> we'll see. But yes, for now, I, I gotta go get some dinner and also rest. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining me today. And until next time, bye-bye!